Good afternoon. Due to COVID-19, Committee of Adjustment public hearings are being conducted electronically via WebEx webinar, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. Participants who registered in advance will be connecting to the hearing using a phone or compatible electronic device and are able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx webinar. Participants will be muted automatically upon entry and when your item is called, participants will be unmuted one person at a time by the moderator. Please mute your devices until called upon to speak. Today, Committee of Adjustment is offering att attendees the option to appear by video. Attendees who registered in advance to attend by video will be temporarily upgraded to panelist when their item is called. During this time, your camera will be enabled. You will only be visible during your five minutes allotted speaking time and at all other times your video will be disabled and you will be reinstated as an attendee. Committee of Adjustment staff will assist us by moderating the WebEx webinar platform, including sharing presentation material received within the written submission deadline. Members of the public and applicants are not allowed to use the uh, share screen function or any other panelist controls during a video appearance. The host will remove you from the panelist role if you fail to respect this instruction. My name is Nancy Oman and I will be chairing this hearing. Panel members participating via WebEx webinar who can be seen and heard are Larry Clay, Zahir Bayat, Yim Chan and Peter Reed. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee and the Wendat peoples and it is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the <coughs> Committee of Adjustment for the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to the property, permission to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consent to sever property to create new lots. Anyone attending today who wants to receive a copy of the committee's decision for an application must submit a written request by email to the general email address for the Committee of Adjustment, Toronto and East York District Office. Please include your name, address and an email address. Committee of Adjustment and TLAP notifications and appeal updates will be sent by email only. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto local appeal body known as TLAB or in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. <coughs> Appeal instructions will be set out at the bottom of the committee's decision. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with their presentation if desired. And when the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak to the committee. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee, and I'll comment when you're reaching the five-minute mark. When addressing the committee, please <coughs> speak slowly and clearly state your name and address. Please confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first with a presentation of the application. Then individuals either in support or opposed <coughs> to the application will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they have completed their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent will be unmuted and will have an opportunity to rebut only those issues that were raised by the speakers. This will mark the end of the discussion and the application will be taken into committee for a decision. When a presentation is not required, <coughs> panel members may ask questions and or take the matter into committee for a decision. Please note, the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised to ensure the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice are informed of the changes. Panel members and staff, are there any declarations of interest? Seeing none, are there any files to be closed this afternoon? Uh, none, Madam Chair. Uh, and are there any deferral requests this afternoon? I uh, yes, in this time slot we have item number 25, 268 Rush Home Road, file number A0506-22TEY. 
Okay, item 25. All right, I, um, let's deal with that. I don't show any speakers um, other than the agent. So panel members, let's deal with the deferral for item 25. Uh, Mr. D'Olivier, are you there? Panel, I'm here. I'm here representing TCC Fresh Home and I'm with replacement design located at 911 Davenport Road. Um, can you just tell us why, you, why you're looking for a deferral? And maybe speak up a bit because I can barely hear you. Certainly. So we're looking for a deferral <coughs> just because uh, there's been some development uh, between the owner and some changes to the design that will affect some of the zoning bylaws uh, that are, we're currently requesting. It's going to change um, the overall secondary suite areas. So we need some time to get that revision re reviewed by the zoning examiner so we can come back with a proper notice and speak to the neighbors once again. We don't assume there won't be any problems with the, those neighbors, but we just want to make sure we're coming forward with the proper notice. <coughs> okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, panel members, let's take it into committee for the deferral. Mr. Reed. Thanks, Chair. Uh, I think that this is a necessary deferral request uh, given that there are going to be material changes to the application, so I move we defer the application. Okay. Do I have a seconder? Mr. Bayat, so a uh, motion to defer the application, <coughs> moved by Mr. Reed, seconded by Mr. Bayat. All in favor? Okay, this carries unanimously. So let's go to item number 20, which <coughs> is number 12, Normandy Boulevard. Uh, Mr. Bayat, I think you're unmuted. Can you check your mic maybe? I'm not sure who it is, but I think. No, I'm good. You're good? Somebody's yep. somebody's mic is open. I'm not sure who it is. Oh, open as in you can hear as me. In, right? As as in we can hear you coughing. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. Okay. Thanks. All right. Item number twenty. So twelve Normandy Boulevard. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have correspondence uh, expressing concern, um, but no address was provided, and correspondence in opposition from number 16, Bellhaven Road. And I am showing uh, two speakers listed. Do we have both? Okay. Do I have the agent on the line? Alexandra Racher. I'm the agent for 12 Normandy Boulevard application. Hi, um, uh, can you please do a presentation no more than five minutes and then I'll go to the opposition. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we are requesting three variances um, that we do feel are minor and keeping with the general intent of the code. So the three that we're looking at, um, number one is the soft landscaping. And when you look at the plans, the one that you're on right now is fantastic. Um, you can actually see that the yards um, on this side of the street are a little bit strange in that the grade change um, from the floor level of the house down to the lowest grade is quite substantial. So this requires areas that would otherwise be soft landscaped with existing steps that need to lead down to that grade change and walls throughout the property. Um, these are required in order to maintain the grades that are currently there and that continue throughout the other properties. The other reason for it is the existing parking area and deck are to remain. No nothing above that is being changed. So with those, we are just asking to keep them as is. And the parking area is to a size and location required because of the current right of way between the two properties. It can't be any closer to the house, which would then allow more soft landscaping. Uh, the grade change of the yard also touches on the height. So I know that Sean, I hope I say his last name correctly, Sean Guenther from the community planning did reach out to us about the height. And we did get back to him with information on that. If you look at drawing, it's A08 in that set of plans. Yeah, that one there. So what you can see is that the, the grade, the height from grade 
uh, is actually different because of this grade change in the yard. So the main portion of the structure is under the four meter limit. It's at 3.18 meters in height. The portion that is above that height limit is just, um, it's a bike storage shed area that opens to that upper grade at the driveway. So from that upper grade, it is well under the four meters, but when measured from that lower grade that we're calling the finished grade for that other portion of the structure, then it becomes over that four meters in height. Uh, the last the last variance would be the lot coverage. Um, it is 9% versus the five, and that is a little bit larger, but because of the difference needing the storage at one area and lower, um, we do feel that it still fits within the area. Most of the backyards here either have large sheds, garages, um, and similar structures within the backyard. And there was actually, at 18 Normandy was approved for a larger 10.8% recently. Um, and so we do feel that that still fits within the intent and the overall, um, the overall minor variance for the area. Okay. Um, I think we'll hold our questions till after we hear from the opposition and then we'll have you back. Perfect. Okie doke. Hi, hi Andrew. <clears throat> You've been unmuted and you can turn on your video if you wish. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Maxwell. I live at uh, 5 Bellhaven Road, which is the street just west of Normandy. Um, I have a couple concerns regarding this. Um, in, the, in the site map, which you can't see with the site map, is there's actually a private laneway behind Normandy property, which is used by several residents to uh, get in and out of their property. I feel like the amount of um, hardscape will increase uh, potential rainfall and, and flooding issues in the back. Um, I know the other Normandy, um, other 118, basic, they had a large, um, a large increase or large building, but I was I was unable to come and I didn't reach the deadline, but. The other issue is the logistics of it. Um, I like I know it's a small variance, but these people used the back laneway to build, which is private property. So I like to, that to be taken in consideration. Uh, something this size, um, whether small or large, that it take into account that they do not that they are aware that this is private property and and does not entitle them to use it. And basically, that's all I have to say. Okay. okay. Panel members, do you have any questions uh, for the speaker? Okay. Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, do you have? Yeah. Do you have Lily Adams? Hi, Lily. You've been unmuted. I was on. Um... Hi, Lily. Hello? Hi there, can you hear me? I can now. Um, oh, okay, great, thank yeah. you. Can I'm, you, I'm I, also... Um, uh, hold on, I hold on, hold on. I need you to state your name and address for the record, and then you have five minutes. Okay, it's uh, Lily Adams, um, 23 Belhaven Road. Um, so I do agree with um, Andrew that um, that is a private laneway. Um, Many of us use that private laneway to park um, and, you know, there are kids occasionally who play in that area and there are also plants. Um, I just need to know if you would be accessing the laneway and if you are, uh, we just ask that you provide um, advance notice, like at least a week. Um, I'm saying this because in the past, um, the neighbors on um, Normandy have used that private laneway. And after that, I, you know, like I couldn't get out of my 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 parking spot, um, you know, 
and we need to tell the contractors to move their truck and you know they were disgruntled about that and also um there was an occasion where rubble and mud was left on the private laneway and then there were plants that were actually destroyed and you know i do not oppose at all it's just that um if we could receive um ample notice like at least one week so that we can prepare for it and that's it for me okay uh panel members do you have any questions for the speaker mr clay just a quick one just to, i need to understand this private laneway so this is a laneway in between the houses on Bellhaven and normandy that is for the exclusive use of the people who live on Bellhaven is that that's correct okay so normandy folks don't have any rights to that Laneway. No, okay. no, they don't have. It. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Rakhar, are you back? Are you there? Yes. Alrighty. So, if you could speak to the issues uh, raised, I, I know they're um, more of a private issue, but if you can just alleviate some concerns here. Absolutely, absolutely. So I know the two concerns. The first one was about um, the amount of hard surface and creating any kind of runoff issues. And the construction will be done in a way that mitigates any of that. Um, this is, I mean, if you do see overhead views of the yards, they're very similar hardscape throughout all the other yards surrounding them. And we would be sure that the construction is done to not cause any kind of issues with that. Uh, in terms of the laneway, there are no plans at all to use that laneway space. There is a mutual drive and the neighbor at 14, who the mutual drive is shared with, is in agreement with the plans and has given us permission to use the shared access for construction. So there will be no use of the laneway at all. Okay. Panel members, do you have any questions for the agent? Mr. Bayat. Had to unmute. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, just a couple of questions. One is you're asking for a, a basically a 20% reduction in uh, soft landscaping. What is the current percentage of soft landscaping um, on this property? Uh, sorry, 20, I believe we're asking for 10%, aren't we? Because it's 50% and we have 40 going in there. So the current soft landscaping, so there's currently about a 10 by 10 shed there. So about 100 square feet or half of that, the 5% is what we will be adding to the space. Yeah, my, my concern always is we're trying to increase soft landscaping rather than decrease it and 20% reduction. Well, in this case, you're talking about 10%. Um, it's still significant. Is there something that you can do to mitigate that loss? Yeah, yeah we, somewhere. Uh, yeah. Definitely. So the front is actually has more soft landscaping than is required, and I know that doesn't really come into play here. But if it did um, help at all to replace the existing parking in its existing footprint with any kind of permeable paver to allow that water to run through, we would be willing to do that as a condition. So that would mean the um, on the site plan where it says existing hardscape parking area talking about the entire space there being uh, permeable? Yes, so the parking area there, which is listed as um, 5,600 by 2,600 there, so 2.6 mm -hmm. by 5.6 meters. Good, okay. That, and you wouldn't be able to the idea of that being a condition? That would be okay with us. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right, let's take it into committee for a decision. Mr. Baya. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, having just uh, got the answer that I was kind of looking, hoping to get, I'd like to uh, uh, move a motion to approve. Uh, I don't believe there are any conditions, um, but the, the only condition that we would apply is that the parking area that's indicated on the site plan um, be uh, constructed of permeable materials. All right, um, did you want to second that, Ms. Chan? Okay, all right, so the motion before us is moved by Mr. Bayat, seconded by Ms. Chan. 
to approve the application, including a condition for permeable pavers on the parking area. All in favor? Okay, that carries. Okay, item number 21. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, seven photographs of trees, and we have two variances before us. I don't show any opposition speakers. Uh, do I have the agent on the line? Hello? Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Okay. Um, so I just need your name for the record. My name is John Sterling. Okay, let me see if there are any questions, panel members, any questions for Mr. Sterling? No? Okay, Mr. Sterling, uh, there are no questions. We've read the material. We're ready to make a decision on this. Anything you want to add before we go into committee? No. All right. Okay, we're in committee, panel members. Uh, Mr. Clay? Sir, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll take this. This is very straightforward. In fact, uh, the pro proposed rear addition that they're um, uh, bringing forward today is a very common uh, addition to homes in this neighborhood and on this street. So I think it fits very, very well in with what's already there um, and it's very minor. So I would like to move a motion to approve this application with no conditions. Okay, Ms. Chan, Ms. Chan second. So motion to approve by, uh, moved by Mr. Clay, seconded by Ms. Chan. All in favor? That carries no. unanimously. Item number 22, 27 Hewitt Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, and an arborist report prepared by Phoenix Tree Care. I, I do show one speaker. I'm not sure if it's opposition or not, but um, I, I guess we'll ask. Anyway, is the agent on the line? Hi, Joe. You've been unmuted. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can now. If you can just, okay, great. just um, state your name for the record, and then I'm just going to find out if this speaker who's listed is in opposition or not. Yes, uh, my name is Joe Dome, 133 Torresdale Avenue, agent for the applicant. Okie doke. Um, can I, yeah, can you just put me through to the speaker that's listed? Hi, Jeannie. You've been unmuted, and you can use your video. Are you there, Jeannie? Hi, Jeannie. Hi. Can you hear us? Hello. Miss Alkawi? Not sure I'm pronouncing it right, but. Miss Alkawi, Jeannie, are you there? Can you hear me? She cannot be not. Yeah, yeah, can you please? That she might just be walking. I'm not sure. I'm okay, while you're doing that, uh, Mr. Dome, I'm just going to see if the members have any questions. Uh, panel members, do you have any questions for the agent? No? Uh, while we're waiting, Chair, just for uh, yeah. the uh, third floor, proposed third floor balcony, is it? It's hard to tell from your drawings what kind of material it is. Is it? Is it? going to be privacy screened? Um, I don't believe it's uh, privacy screened uh, right now, but that we could add that as a uh, condition. Okay, great, thanks. Any other questions? Or? Yeah, I don't know. 
prior prior to this time. Okay. If we don't, there's no more questions. So I mean, we're kind of ready to. make a decision. It's, it's just plain and reading. I'm sorry? And reading, so it's probably like a voice note or something. It's just still showing as being there? Um. Well, All right, so you've made a number of attempts now. All right, panel members, is there any other questions for the agent? We've made numerous attempts to contact the, the speaker who's listed. Okay, Mr. Dome, I think we're ready to take it into committee. Is there anything you'd like to add uh, before we go into committee? Um, I would like to add that uh, the owners have received letters of support from both the adjacent neighbors at number 25 and 29 Hewitt, and they were uh, received after the submission deadline. Um, but uh, yeah, we have those letters. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Um, Ms. Chan, I, did you have your hand up? Oh, okay, go ahead. We're in committee. Yeah, I would like to take this one. Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, the privacy screen is a, a good idea. But also I noticed that in terms of the, the height and the massing of this, uh, this proposal is actually in com in, is comparable to other large homes in the area. So I don't have I don't have any problem with this proposal. Okay, is that a motion? Move for approval. The first floor balcony inside. Okay, so motion uh, is to approve with the condition for privacy screening on the third floor balcony on east and west sides. Uh, moved by Ms. Chan, seconded by Mr. Bayat. All in favor? That carries unanimously. Okay, the next item is item number 23, 208 Bellwoods Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. Uh, no other correspondence. No opposition speakers are listed. Do I have the agent on the line? Yes, hello, can you hear me? Uh, yep. Hi, this is uh, Tamor Balba, agent and architect of the owner. Um, uh, I would just like to take a little bit of the committee's time, Madam Speaker, if that's okay. Um, uh, there is one uh, uh, letter of support from the neighbor at 206 Bellwoods, which was uploaded, um, uh, I believe, three days ago or two days ago. A uh, letter of support from the adjacent neighbor to the south. Um, I would just contend um, that this is a uh, these are uh, modest um, minor variances being sought for, for a growing family as well as to uh, make a um, basement suite, a uh, two-bedroom, and bring in, uh, uh, an affordable two-bedroom basement suite uh, online as well. Um, we do come, however, with a kind of a last-minute uh, um, observation here. Um, on and in discussions with our case manager, having noticed uh, a, a, a height of 10.44 meters being requested, um, we'd just like to say that in, in all of the, um, in the application form, in every single drawing that was presented and shared with neighbors, 11.0 uh, meters is the requested. Um, again, in speaking with the case manager, and in, 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 I couldn't review the drawings that, from which measurements were being taken, but uh, it seems as though um, measurements were in, potentially in, incorrectly taken or not include uh, the roof construction, which goes up, uh, which is evident on all the drawings, elevations and sections. If you go to um, uh, the 10th slide, please, drawing A202. Did you review the variances before they were submitted? Our, our, our only uh, mistake in this, Madam Speaker, is catching, catching this uh, too late. It brought up questions that could not be answered in time. We... See, 
I mean, I'm going to ask staff, but usually when it's a bigger variance, usually we have to recirculate. So I think this has to be deferred, but I'm going to just uh, ask staff. Um, yes, if the variances are greater, and it sounds like it, the height will be, um, the application will have to be deferred to give um, new, uh, new notice. However, um, the agent may want to confer with the zoning examiner because this was uh, based on the zoning notice that we have and that's our notice so if there's a problem now it should be deferred for at least um, consultation with the zoning examiner to get the proper zoning um, variances identified and new notice given well mr. Balba I I mean we would have no choice but to defer if you want to go with 11 meters but um, I, I'm willing to stand it down if you want to make a call to your to your client to see if you want to go with 10.44, but I, that's your decision. Thank you. I, I appreciate that, Madam Speaker. Um, uh, given the circumstances, again, in, 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 in all drawings, um, application forms, and everything that was presented, uh, we, we never veered from that. Uh, so it, it comes down to a a measurement set of questions and in this case and in, in the in the interest of the project um, I think I think we will accept that deferral okay so you'd like to go with a deferral then and I think staff will um, do their best to get you on the next available agenda as soon as you're able to resubmit properly whatever what they require Thank you, Madam Speaker. I appreciate that. Okay. And thank you to the committee, and sorry uh, to have taken your time. Yeah, yeah no worries. Um, okay, panel members, so to the, um, the deferral for the reasons that you just heard, um, we're in committee. Mr. Clay. Yeah, I'm happy to move that, uh, that motion, Chair, for the purposes of the applicant to consult with uh, zoning staff and recirculate if necessary. Okay, and Mr. Bayat second. So motion to defer. Uh, moved by Mr. Clay, seconded by Mr. Bayat. All in favor? That carries unanimously. Okay, item number 24, 225 West Lake Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have a revised site plan, floor plan, and elevations, a revised zoning waiver, eight <coughs> photographs of similar properties, uh, we have decisions for a, a number of properties uh, on Westlake, Lumsden, and Wallington and Main Street. An arborist report prepared by Greenprint Consulting Arborists. We have email correspondence from uh, planning and um, I believe that, yeah, there's a deletion of variance number three, revising variance number four to read 37.5%, which equals 87.11 meter square, and tie it to planning. And we have forestry asking for condition number one. We have a number tw of letters in support, 20, and that includes number 223, tw which is adjacent and the uh, rest of the signatures are from residents on Westlake and Crew Avenue. I am, let me see here. Okay, I don't show any opposition speakers. Do I have the agent on the line? Yes, good afternoon. My name is Leo Mastandre. I'm the agent for the owners at uh, 225 Westlake. Um, Mr. Mastandrea, can you just confirm what I said about the deletion of variance number three and revising variance number four to read 37.5, uh, which equals 87.11 meters? Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. We had a phone call from planning to uh, reduce our coverage, which basically was the uh, existing detached garage. So um, we removed it to bring our numbers back down to uh, reasonable levels. All right, so we're looking at the variance um, as amended with those two changes. Correct. Okay, I don't think we need a presentation, but there could be some questions. Uh, panel members, any questions for the agent? Wow, no questions for you today. Is there any, anything else you want to add before we take it into committee for a decision? Um, 
No, I think it's all there. It's pretty straightforward. All righty. Okay. Uh, not a quite not a question, Chair, but I I did want to just compliment Leo uh, for the uh, the work his client has done to get all the uh, signatures. Twenty. 20 uh, letters or si signatures is significant. It really helps us a lot. Okay. And, and in that regard, I'll just carry on. Okay. Uh, I think this is a, um, it's a corner lot. Um, I thought that the design was quite um, complementary to the corner lot um, and sympathetic to the street. Uh, it seemed uh, the variances being requested overall, I think, are, are quite uh, minor. I think this would be a good addition to this area. Uh, so I'd like to move uh, approval of this application subject to the planning conditions, which are tying it to plans. I guess it's the amended uh, yep. uh, uh, variances, uh, as well as forestry condition number one. Okay, so I have a motion to approve the application, um, including forestry number one. So it's as amended, deleting variance number three, revising variance number four to 37.5 times coverage, which equals 87.11 meters squared. And planning wants it tied to the site plan. Okay, now that's moved by Mr. Clay. And I don't know who had their hand up first, Mr. Baia okay. or Ms. Chan, so. Uh, Ms. Chan can have it. <laughs> all right, Ms. Chan seconds. All in favor. Okay, that motion carries unanimously. Item uh, number 26, item number 25 was dealt with. So item number 26, 182 Witchwood Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. Correspondence in opposition from number 33 uh, Pinewood uh, Avenue and I do show uh, one speaker, and um, do I have the agent on the line? My name is Kevin Downey. I'm the agent for the owners. Okay, Mr. Downey, one second. Uh, do we have the speaker on the line? Uh, Madam Chair, I'm still trying to contact the uh, registered speaker. Okay, Mr. Downey, we do have one speaker listed in opposition, which is the person that had submitted the, um, the written opposition, which I'm assuming you've read. So in the meantime, while staff tries to get in touch with her, I'll see if the panel have any questions for you. Panel members, do you have any questions for Mr. Downey? No? Okay. Mr. Downey, is there anything that you would like to add while we're waiting for us to try to get this person on the line? Um, I, I guess just to clarify, well, I guess people have understood it. We're just trying to, uh, two of the variances, three of them have to do with the setback to the north side property line. And this is just simply a continuation of the existing uh, house. Okay. I do have some comments about the letter of opposition, but I assume the process is to wait for her to speak first. Well, yeah, if assuming we get her on the line, I don't know, staff's tried a couple times. I think they're making one final attempt. Okay. Um, I do know that, um, I mean, I th think from what I read, um, she thought was too large and uh, some of the other things were really um, noise and, and tenant issues that are not really before this committee but um, I don't doesn't look like we're able to reach her still dialing still dialing Okay, we may have gotten her, so. Room to record new messages. Perhaps not. <laughs> okay. 
No. All right. Okay. So we've tried uh, we've tried two or three times now. So if you want to just quickly speak to those issues, um, I would. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, she listed five points of objection. Um, the first one being that she thinks the garage is two stories. It's not. It's one story. Uh, the property uh, item two. Uh, there's no density in terms of people load. This is a two unit place existing. It will be a two unit place with no change in the bedroom counts for the space. Item three, uh, I would mention that both properties, you know, both Pinewood and Witchwood are deep lots. So you're, you're not as close as one might think. And the, uh, 186 at Witchwood is directly behind her, and that is a similar sized addition as what's being proposed. 188 has a second floor full width rear balcony, and 190 has a substantial third floor rear balcony. And item four, in terms of softscape, we are asking for one half of 1% variance on the soft landscaping. And simply to reiterate on number five, the length and the floor area of the uh, proposal are not minor variances. They are within allowable limits. And that's it. Okay, well, thank you for addressing um, the concerns. All right, panel members. Um, there are no questions, so let's take it into committee for a decision. Uh, Mr. Reed. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I think this is a well-designed project that really, I think, mimics the type of additions that happen in this neighborhood and specifically on the street. Um, it's been stepped down to the rear and it's restrained. And I think looking at the actual variances being requested, they are minor, both in amount and in impact. Um, so I move approval of this application with no conditions. Okay. Uh, Peter, Peter, would you, um, would you, what do you think about the third floor balcony? The screening, I thought in the drawings it showed screening already. It, but... it calls it a place of refuge, uh, which I assume it is. Um, but maybe on both sides, just because it is a third story balcony, right? Yeah, sure. Let's put it in just to make sure. So, and with opaque screening on the north and south uh, side of the third floor balcony. Great, thank or you. place of refuge. Ms. I'd like, 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 like to comment on that, uh, the, the balconies. When I looked at the plans, actually, these are all set back. And also, this, the areas is very small. Actually, I do not have a con uh, but if, if, if everybody prefer to have a private screen, it's okay with me. But I just want to mention that. These are very tiny balconies. It's probably for safety that they need to have a, a outdoor refuge area. As, but I'm okay with the privacy screen, but I don't think they need it. Okay, I think it's just on the third floor that yeah. you're proposing it. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I'm agnostic about second floor, but usually when you get a third floor, you get a lot of overlooks. So I think it's probably, regardless, it, it's probably not a bad idea. Okay. okay, so the so, motion then is with a condition for op opaque screening on the north-south side of the third floor balcony. That's moved by Mr. Reed. Are you seconding this, Mr. Quay? Okay. Sure. All right. All right, all in favor? Okay, that motion carries. Item number 27, one Grimthorpe Road. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey site plan floor plans and elevations. We have email correspondence from transportation. They don't have any concerns. We have seven form letters in support from number uh, several people, actually four on um, Grimthorpe, Grimthorpe, three on Atlas, and one of the ones on Grimthorpe is adjacent, number three. And I only show the agent listed as a speaker. Good afternoon once again, committee. My name is Mike Villalivera. You're representing one group Thorpe Road. I'm with replacement design located at 911 Davenport Road. All righty. Um, panel members, do you have any questions for Mr. D'Oliveira? Mr. Baya? You're, mu you're muted, you're muted. Thank 
Thank you. Uh, just if you could just address the uh, variance number five, is that an existing uh, situation as well? Uh, so that's in regards to the soft landscaping. Yes, yes, we're not really proposing any change to the overall hard landscaping that there is currently. Uh, this number gets triggered just because of the what's considered front yard being slightly different now that the addition moves forward slightly. Uh, so that's the only change there, really. And the fact that the, what was driveway is now our parking lot area. Thank you. Any other questions, panel members? Okay, Mr. Lovier, we um, have no more questions. We're ready to take it into committee. Anything you want to add? I uh, just want to point out, you mentioned we have a few letters of support from addresses along Atlas. As you can see, looking at our site plan, uh, those would be the properties that kind of abut the side of our addition. Uh, so our clients have made sure to speak to anyone who would be directly affected by this, either getting a letter of support or just really having no concerns listed from those uh, attached neighbors. Uh, sorry, abutting neighbors in this case. Uh, so really, I think this is quite a straightforward application. All of our setbacks are kind of the existing conditions of that attached garage. Uh, the front canopy overhang is in line with the existing front porch uh, roof. We're just continuing that along to form a partial sort of carport. So I, I think that just about covers everything we're looking for here. Uh, if you have any other questions, open to it. But no, we're. Uh, I think the panel members are ready to take it into committee for a decision. So okay. All right, panel members, any comments or a motion or both? Mr. Reed. Thanks. Uh, I'm happy to bring a motion. I, I think this is a, a smart use of space um, by building over the, the existing garage. And uh, I think a lot of the, most of the variances are just reflecting existing conditions. Um, I think that the added, added space in the house um, will not impact uh, neighbors as it's pretty hidden away between garages and at the back of a lot. So I move approval of the application with no conditions. Okay, uh, Mr. Bayat second, so motion to approve. Moved by Mr. Reed, seconded by Mr. Bayat. All in favor? Okay, that motion carries. And uh, I guess Mr. D'Oliviera is with us for the next one, which is item 28, 80 Halsey Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have forestry asking for condition number one and planning asking to refuse variance number two. Two form letters in support from number 82, which is adjacent as well as 84 Halsey and opposition from number 78 Halsey. I do show two speakers in opposition. Have you got them both standing? Yeah, okay. Um, Mr. D'Oliviera, if you can just identify yourself again for the record and then you have five minutes to do a presentation. We do have two people speaking in opposition. Certainly. So once again, my name is Mike Oliveira. I'm here representing 80 Halsey Avenue and I'm with Replacement Design located at 911 Davenport Road. Uh, as you had mentioned, you're seeking relief to, uh, to the bylaw to convert the integral garage into a bachelor suite. Uh, the variances we are seeking we believe are similar to other approvals the committee has made in the past. And as you mentioned, our plan has collected two letters of support from 82 and 84. Uh, although we're here to, today with two variances, we believe these to be quite minor when you take into account the existing conditions of the home and that we are adding much needed additional apartments to the city, which has been part of the city's mandate over the last few years, uh, given all the introductions of the length of the suite bylaws and garden suite bylaws we've been seeing. Uh, our clients stress to us that this is an area that they want to be able to stay in and start a family in the future. And with that in mind, we designed two units of the home that our client could stay in while also renting out the others, allowing the opportunity to stay in the neighborhood. Given the restrictions of the lot and budget and the overwhelming increases to material and labor costs since the pandemic, uh, the most straightforward solution we found was to turn the garage into a usable living area. This allowed us to keep the overall shell of the building untouched, keeping costs low while also avoiding a majority of zoning issues. Uh, although planning staff has provided a letter that they're not in support due to the use of digital garages being common in the neighborhood, uh, we believe this takes away from presence of eyes on the street 
Our proposed alterations will provide additional eyes on the street, helping to promote a safer neighborhood while also keeping in line with the general character. As even down the street at 31A Halsey, you can see a similar garage conversion, such as ours, where uh, the garage was turned into living space. There's windows and doors for access. Uh, there's also multiple homes around there, such as 40, 37, 35, 34, and 23 Halsey that all have similar kind of front pad parking as we're proposing here. Uh, I understand there's some concerns about uh, these being apartments. Our client has told us this is a place they want to stay in. Uh, although he is just a single man at the moment, he will be using the bachelor suite that we're adding. And we have the upper unit that could be rented out to a family. And in the future, if he does kind of proceed, he can convert that space to his own family and continue renting out the basement. And as you can all imagine with the prices these days, it, these kind of rental units are needed for people to be able to afford a home in the first place and are needed in the city with everyone kind of immigrating and opening questions you might have. Uh, I think we'll hold our questions till we hear from the opposition um, and then we'll have you back. Okay. Right. Okay, thanks. Do you have the um, first one? Hi, Irma, you've been unmuted. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Salatino. Thank you, uh, members of the committee. I hope you can hear me well. I can, if you can just state your name and address for the record, and then you have five minutes. Okay, thank you. So my name is Irma Spahil. I am the owner uh, of uh, 78 Halsey Avenue, the property just next door to 80 Halsey Avenue. We have submitted um, a letter of opposition for this proposal. And we would like to have a few comments, make a few submissions, a few arguments against this uh, plan. Uh, I heard uh, Mr. Mike saying that there have been um, other changes in the neighborhood. Uh, he mentioned 4041, I think, Halsey Avenue. These are townhouses that are not part of the row we are currently living in. So. We've been living in the row for about a year now. There are 20 townhouses that are in this row. No garage has been altered into a living space in this row. So this is, in the application, I noticed that this is a single family row townhouse. And I looked at, um, uh, you know, the definition of the single row, uh, which says, according to jurisprudence and case law, is a single family uh, social unit consisting of parents and uh, related or unrelated person that have joint ownership of the unit. So we are a family of five people and we don't see this uh, apartment being converted into two rental units because uh, it will definitely affect the neighbors. And at the personal level, we make uh, three arguments here. First of all, the enjoyment of our property rights, definitely we will have some nuisance issues, if not trespassing issues. Uh, you know now uh, the, the plan, uh, this is row townhouses, there is no property line in between the two properties in the front lawn. Uh, there could be, you know, noise, uh, caring of the landscape, you know, watering, uh, cutting grass, so these uh, type of issues. Also, uh, people moving in and out, this will be a rental. And uh, for the past year uh, that the property, actually not se six, seven months, right? So not even a year from the changing of ownership of uh, 80 Halsey, there have been two changes, if not tr three changes uh, in the people who have been living in the property. So very common uh, very um, often people are changing, people, people moving in and out. We're not sure the reasons, but we have no noticed. We have um, uh, uh, been there and noticing these movings. Now, I noticed in the application there was something about parking. There was a variance that was requested and was uh, having an opposition. Uh, we know that uh, having two units will need more parking spaces. We are removing a garage and adding another unit there, which means, of course, that people, two units, at least two cars will be parking. 
there and of course um, it could add to the noise and um, nuisance of our property as well. The altering of the door that is proposed uh, to uh, enter you know the the, the new suite that's being proposed is right in front of our dwelling as well. So there is not even two meters distance between their garage and our garage and it's just too close to our property. So we don't even see how people can move uh, in with their uh, things, uh, couches and everything. So that would be a problem uh, for us. And also the, there is uh, an altering of the front um, wall of uh, the unit facing the street. So uh, the, the door garage will be altered to a window, which of course will be not a minor, so something very noticeable at the front of the street in Halsey Avenue. All the other townhouses look the same, but this one will look different. Uh, another reason at the personal level, economic reasons. So we bought this property after 14 years living in this country. We invested a lot in this property and having a rental property just next door to us will definitely in this uh, crisis that we're experiencing now, not, uh, right now, volatile housing market, uh, this will decrease the value of our property and uh, we will not even know how much our property will um, cost, will, will be valued in the future. So definitely we fear a decrease in the value uh, because I would assume that people want to buy a property um, where um, there is no rental just next door to them. The third is the safety reasons. Um, you're at five minutes. I need you to wrap up now. Yeah, so safety reasons, um, definitely fire hazards, living, uh, many people living there, uh, many foreign people like uh, moving in and out. So we definitely have small children. I have three daughters that I'm raising. So I definitely uh, ask from the committee to keep this into consideration. We are considering um, a corporation application here, Pearl State Incorporated versus individual Okay, uh, um, you're at five and a half minutes, so, so I'm okay. going to have I thank to- Thank you uh, for the opportunity you provided to us, mm -hmm. and I hope you'll take these reasons into consideration. Thank okay. you. Your thank you very much. Committee. Any questions of the speaker, panel members? No? Okay. Do you have the second one? Hi, Adelina, you've been unmuted. Adelina, are you there? Adelina, you've been unmuted. Adelina, if you can hear me, um, it's uh, your turn to speak. If you wish to speak, if you don't, please let me know. So I said dialed in. Hmm? So I actually called in by phone. Try to send her an email invite. Okay, while we're trying to uh, get a hold of this person, um, let's uh, go to Mr. Doliviera. If you can um, just address what's been uh, stated so far, and then I'll see if the members have any questions. Uh, sure. So, first off, you brought up uh, uh, fire and safety concerns um, as per any kind of building permit application, and adding units such as this, we'd have to make sure we meet general OBC requirements for fire and soundproofing in between units, as well as our neighbors. So all of those kind of concerns will be taken care of at the building permit stage. Uh, they mentioned concerns with uh, people moving in and out. Uh, that's typical with any property, whether this is going to be a single family or multiple units. Uh, it, it's also a little odd given the fact that right across the street we have two major apartment complexes. Uh, if the concern of people moving in and out of these type of places was a major issue that I, I can't speak on how they kind of purchase their property, but 
I would have assumed that would have been part of their overall process and I mean, whether or not they were okay with this. Um, we're not proposing any changes to the front yard landscaping similar to our other project. This is all existing. Uh, the driveway is being converted into the parking pad in this case as well. Uh, there's general landscaping and people mowing lawns and stuff that it's all typical for any property. Uh, I, I don't really know what more I can say with uh, okay. those types of things. Well, let's see. I, I see a couple hands up, so I'm not sure who had their hand up first, Larry or Yim, but uh, Yim, uh, go ahead. I don't know. Who wants okay. to go first, you or Larry? Because I don't I'll know. Defer to, I'll defer to Yim. Okay. Okay. And my, my question is very simple. I noticed on the same streets, uh, people actually also park on the driveway while they have a, a integral garage. I just want to know, do you know anything about this uh, parking on the driveway? Are they, are they permitted uh, as uh, space or are they just park on, on the driveway anyway, even if they have a garage? Yeah, as far as I can see, it's typical throughout the city and anyone who has this kind of little garage, they tend to park on the driveway anyways. Uh, most of these garages turn into uh, sheds, essentially. And that seems to be the case throughout most of the street where you see multiple cars parked along the driveway instead of actually in the integral garages themselves. Um, and just to clarify, the previous speaker mentioned the property I referred to as 41, but it's actually 31A if you were to try and look it up as well. But 31A was the one I was referring to that has a similar converted garage. Okay, Mr. Clay? Uh, I had the very same question. It was all about parking in part because we, we do, you've seen we do have a, um, a report from planning which is suggesting that uh, we refuse your variance for front yard parking. I, I will admit I did go up and down the street and it looked like uh, virtually every uh, every driveway had at least one or two cars in it. So I'm I'm interested in your response or your your uh, your observations on planning's recommendation. Yeah, so we understand planning wants to keep a kind of integral garage use, but the way as you pointed out, uh, it, it's not really used properly as parking. Most of these people are using it as a storage place or a shed. Um, this property is accessible by uh, public transit. There's bus stops within five minutes for any potential renters. With the, the approval here today, hopefully, uh, we would have the required one parking space on the lot. So there isn't necessarily a parking shortage if we were to be approved for that one parking space in the front of our property here. And uh, if I can just go back, 40, 37, 35, 34, 23, these are all properties along Halsey uh, that have no integral garages. They all either park completely on the front property or in partial carports, uh, but none of them seem to have full depth carports that could even have parking behind the front wall. These are all properties that have similar conditions that we're applying here. Um, Ms. Chan. Yes, I do understand that. Larry, I think what it is is that if we refuse variance two, that it will trigger a parking deficiency. A variance. They will require one parking space, I think. That's correct. Yeah, and and I think that it is, uh, uh, there's, uh, it's not so simple as to refuse number two, but they will have to come back for a zero parking uh, Variance. When a car is parked in front of the garage like that, is it entirely on private property? It would be, yes. We yes, have so, um, uh, over six meters from the front of the uh, garage to our property line. And that's what I, my observation would be. It seems, I just don't understand if they are parking wholly on private property, um, why is that a problem? Uh, is that a question to me, sorry? Or is well, that... sure, you can take a, you can take a <laughs> shot at it. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a hard one for us to answer as well because this is a typical situation. 
I'm sure you see along your own streets as well, people parked on the front driveways all the time. It's not necessarily an issue until you apply for a zoning and, or building permit. Uh, technically, if somebody wanted to make a complaint, they could call and say that someone's parking illegally in their front yard. But generally speaking, parking authorities aren't coming through and giving everyone who's parking in their driveway a ticket. Uh, so it's a point where the zoning bylaw and kind of general practice and the way the city kind of enforces things don't really kind of mesh together properly. It, it's an issue for the zoning bylaw, but it's not really something that anyone else kind of sees as a problem or deals with from a parking enforcement. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, oh, can, let me just check with staff for a sec. Uh, were you able to get a hold of that person, Stanley? She's still locked in. Try. Okay, just bear with us for one second. I'm going to give it one more shot. And before we go to the, I think Mr. Bayat has a question. So just a second. Hi, Adelina, you've been unmuted. Adelina, are you there? Okay, that's three three times. Um, so okay, all right. So we're unable to reach um, the second speaker. Okay, Mr. Baya, you have a question. Thank you. Just just uh, it's one of those uh, uh, dilemmas for me at least. Uh, on the one hand, I see the. Uh, practical nature of using those technically often often unused garages for the purpose they were intended and turn them into habitable space and it would make a lot of sense uh, by the same token um, by approving this does this mean that we trigger some other issues that planning seems to perhaps have in mind perhaps I, I'm not sure this is a bit of a dilemma for me So in terms of approving, say, the parking space? Yeah, you know, the, the, uh, because planning has basically said uh, parking spaces in the front yard is not approved um, in this particular area. Um, and I, 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 can, I can understand your client's perspective, and not only your client, presumably many other folks who have this kind of situation where you've got a garage using it for storage might want to turn it into a habitable space and just leave the car outside um, in the driveway on your property. Um, so you've got a bit of a, on the one hand, this is sort of common sense approach. And on the other hand, you've got the uh, uh, issue that planning has raised and saying, you know, this is not generally permitted. So <laughs> uh, it's a question of which one do you go with? Yeah, I, I can say from our phone calls with planning, it, they really did say it comes down to whether or not the uh, committee was to approve us. They didn't have any other concerns, minus the fact that this is their general uh, opinion for these mm -hmm. types of applications in this area. So they didn't really have any concerns with any other aspects of the project or anything else that could trigger. It was really just kind of their general sense for this area. Yeah, yeah. I, this kind of is the only way to make an apartment work for this type of row house because as you realize there's no access to the rear um, it's kind of hard to fit in any kind of steps to, down to a basement or anything like that in the front without triggering additional variances for soft landscaping so this was kind of the most straightforward approach and uh, best use of the space we could get are we in committee chair um if there are no more questions, then we can go into committee, yeah. Okay, do you have a question, Ms. Chan? Otherwise, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Clay is gonna... We are, in, we are in committee, right? Well, yeah, so, but Mr. Clay, I think, was gonna say something. So yes, we're in committee. And then I'll come to you. Thank okay. You. Uh, yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, I, uh, Again, I, I think we're all struck by, um, you know, sort of the practicality of what uh, the, the applicant is asking for. Um, at least I am. Um, 
I, uh, I don't frankly have any difficulty with the parking arrangement uh, that is being proposed where um, they can park on the driveway, which I think um, I think from my perspective is, is kind of practically what most people, if not all people do on that strip. And if you go up and down, not only is it one car, there's often two cars on the driveway. So that seems to be the norm. Um, so I, I'm curious what my colleagues think, but I, I, I frankly have no difficulty with this application in general, and um, I, I have no problem with uh, approving variance number two, which would allow them to park on their driveway. Ms. Chan? Yes, uh, actually, I like to um, um, see, see it in my own um, interpretation. I think that is a technical issue here. Does not matter whether the parking space is approved or not, people will park on the driveway. So that's the reality, as Larry points out, and as we evidence so that almost every house is using the driveway as parking space. So um, I will, I tend to approve uh, for uh, support to approve these variances because by refusing it, you will trigger a parking deficiency, in the, and they might have to come back to a committee or adjustment again. Mr. Reed? Yeah, I, I agree uh, with both my colleagues. I, I think this is actually a really good application for the city in terms of adding density in and adding units into neighborhoods that traditionally don't have, or not neighborhoods, but into types of housing that don't usually lend themselves to secondary suites. And I think the impacts of this uh, aren't, aren't bad. Um, especially given the immediate context. This is in a, an apartment neighborhood, essentially. Um, and I think this results in a more attractive house as well. And as Larry said, that everyone parks on the driveways anyway. So I support this. Okay. Um, a motion then, Mr. Flynn? Uh, sure. I'll, uh, I'll move uh, to uh, approve this application um, uh, with the... Uh, forestry number one as a condition, but uh, approve both variances. Okay, Mr. Reed, you want a second? Okay, so motion to approve, including forestry condition number one, moved by Mr. Clay, seconded by Mr. Reed. All in favor? Okay, that carries unanimously. Item number 29, 436 Harvey Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey site, plan floor plans and elevations. Two photographs of the rear side of the dwelling, uh, correspondence and support from 438, which is adjacent, and we have a 13 signature petition in support um, signed by owners on Harvey Avenue and <coughs> Shudley Avenue. Okay, and I don't have any opposition speakers listed. Do I have the agent on the line? You there, Mr. Baghdadi? Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Yes, and this is Bamdad Baghdadi from BBA Design Studio. I'm the architect and the applicant for this application before you today. Okay. Um, panel members, do you, we have two variances before us. Do you have any questions for Mr. Baghdadi? Okay, sir, we have no questions. We're ready to take it into committee. Anything you want to add that's not in the submissions? Uh, no, Madam Chair, I think it's a very straightforward application going in line with the existing north wall of the building and um, the only neighbor that is affected by this addition, which is on our north, already signed the si uh, signature in support of our application. Okay, um, let's take it into committee panel members. Mr. Baya. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I think as, as the applicants indicated, it's a very straightforward application with minimal impact on anybody. Um, I don't believe any other conditions. I'm quite happy to move a motion to approve. Okay, Ms. Chan is seconding. All right, so motion to approve, moved by Mr. Bayat, seconded by Ms. Chan. All in favor? That carries unanimously. Item number 30, 225 Queensdale Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey site plan, floor plans and elevations, revised site plan, floor plans and elevations, revised zoning notice, tree inventory site plan, covering letter from the agent as well as presentation material, 
two form letters in support from 214 uh, Queensdale as well as 227, which is adjacent correspondence expressing concern from 218 Springdale. Um, and the concern was regarding um, uh, potential second floor exterior lighting. Okay, do I have the agent on the line? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, if I can have your name and address or your name for the record. Yes, definitely. My, my name is Maria Denegri. I'm the architect, architect and applicant for the um, application at 225 Queensdale. Okay, um, I, I have two speakers listed. Do we have both? Yeah, okay. Before um, I ask you to do a presentation though, uh, I have in my notes here I don't that you're deleting variants one, two, and three, and you're revising variants four to read 45.7 times, which equals 90.68 meters square. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, so we're looking at the application as amended then. Yes. Okay, so I have two speakers who are listed as in opposition or having concerns. So can you do a presentation no more than five minutes, please? Sure. Um, uh, what I will do is just cover uh, the revisions that essentially amend the original zoning notice. Um, from what I understand, the public notice that was issued in July um, listed four variances. Um, the amended drawings and the revised zoning notice um, that was submitted in um, early August or received by the committee in early August essentially eliminated the first, uh, the first three variances listed. Um, so the amended plans essentially show a rear addition, which is the second floor only. Uh, the existing front of the house remains untouched. And um, the only variance remaining uh, is site coverage, and that is actually an existing condition because the existing deck, which will remain, and it is a deck um, that actually hovers above grade, um, is over 5% of the lot area, so it's included in the site coverage calculation. Um, the material that we submitted in the cover letter explaining these revisions, I hope, uh, clarifies those changes. Um, and I guess I am here to answer any other questions. Okay, I'm going to hold our questions till we hear from the um, from the people that are speaking, and then I'll come sure. back to you, and you can <clears throat> speak to those concerns expressed, and then the panel members will ask you any questions. Okay. Yeah, um, Madam Chair, we've lost the first speaker. Um, okay. I've been trying to contact him. He keeps coming in and out. All right. We got the second one. Did we lose him too? <laughs> I'm trying to unmute him, but my mic is locked. I see you, Madam Chair. Um, the lot coverage variance that the agent has. Oh, um, it's increased. Changed. Oh, yeah, it's increasing. It's actually increasing. It's a larger variance than what we gave notice on. Okay, sorry, I should have caught that. Um, thank you for pointing that out. Okay, um, Maria, I, 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 we're trying to get a hold of the people listed. Um, we're not having much success. Having said that, staff just um, reminded me that uh, when there's an increase in a variance, we have to recirculate. And I do appreciate the fact that you've removed three variances and we're now sitting with one variance before us. But because it's larger, we have to recirculate, which means we're looking at a deferral. Um, okay, but um, so in the, oh, I understand, I think I understand what you're saying. So we've deleted um, the original variances one, two, and three. Yeah. The zoning, the amended zoning notice listed the, um, the percent, the existing basically uh, lot coverage, 45.7%. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but are you telling me that because that 45.7% is greater than the 41 originally listed? Yep. Yeah, I, I, I'm really sympathetic with you on this one, I have to tell you. But, right. Um, <laughs> We had one earlier for similar reasons. Had to be no, no, I, yeah, I was, I, I was listening actually, um, and yeah, um, but uh, that it was, yeah. My understanding was that uh, that that was a uh, that was actually in the zoning notice that it yeah. wasn't actually. The part thing of is, the, the zoning notice yeah. is not what gets circulated, right? So that's mm -hmm. the, it's the actual committee notice that gets circulated. That's why. You know, also when people s say, well, we want to revise, you know, number eight, nine, ten, and we're kind of looking, and it's it's not because they're reading the zoning notice and we're dealing with the circulated notice from mm -hmm. the committee. So I, I really am sympathetic mm -hmm. because, as I said, we're looking at one variance, and I, I get that the actual structure is 41% after what you explained about the deck. So I, I just, it's kind of... Okay. It's... Um. Uh, it's, we have no choice. Oh my God, so then, so, so my only option here is, uh, is to stick uh, with the forty-one percent. Um, that would mean actually removing existing deck area. Yeah, right? uh, either uh, either that, I? or you have to come back for it for a deck variance. So it's kind of either, right, it's right, either right, way, right. right? It's okay. It's a bit of a no win. Um, could I? Um, could I? Um, should I ask the client this, or my client, whether or not um, this is actually an option? Um, and then that's one question. And then second, I mean, if we do a deferral, like how long do we wait? To, um, uh, I'm going to ask. Able to tell me that? Like in this case, uh, is do you have everything you need? Just you have to circulate. How fast do you think you can get? Uh, we submitted everything. I, sorry, like, I, no, no, I'm just I'm drawings. talking to staff right now. Just oh, a second. Oh, oh, yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah, um, we could probably put this on the next agenda that we're mailing out for. I just don't know what that is offhand. Is that September seventh? What what are we mailing out for right now? <coughs> it could possibly be September twenty first. Would be September twenty first. Okay, got it. All right, I just got I just got a text from the um, the owner. He's fine with the deferral. He I, I think that okay. they don't want to alter existing conditions, right? And essentially, this is an existing condition <laughs> at this point. All right. Yeah, I mean, otherwise he's they're faced with, as you say, taking the, an existing deck down well, yeah, and, or exactly. coming back anyway. So I, I really, again, like I repeat myself, I I really do feel bad for you, but. Uh, <laughs> We don't have a choice. No, no, that's okay. That's fine. Um, okay, I'm assuming we you didn't you weren't able to reach anybody. Uh, Madam Chair, I was able to connect with the the second speaker again, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but not the first. Okay, is he still there? Okay, bear with me a second, Maria. I think we got one speaker, so I'm just going to let them know it's going to be deferred. Hi, Michael, you've been unmuted. Yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Hi, um, Michael, can you just identify yourself for the record? And then I'm assuming you've been listening. We're not hearing this today. We have to defer it now. Yeah, Michael Kogan, um, I, I was listening. I just couldn't speak. Yeah, and I, I guess um, if it's deferred, it's deferred. Yeah, yeah. so basically, uh, I don't know if you've been listening the whole time. Hopefully, the agent can connect with you. Um, but you know, there's only one variance remaining, and it's it's basically for an existing condition of the deck. Like variances one, two, and three have all been deleted. Yeah, I, I have a question, but I can ask them. I don't if it went from 41 to 45. Oh, because they were removing the deck. I got gotcha. uh, No, no, the, it's an existing deck. So when you come That's in, it. when you come in for variances for something else, it triggers existing conditions. No, no, I, I get it, but I think. I think on the original proposal, when it was 41%, that deck was being removed to allow for oh. a walkout. And now, so I understand what So happened. that I can't speak to. It's probably no, best so. that, um, you know, we encourage Maria to have a conversation with you um, before this comes back in September. 
Yeah, we have no issue. We just wanted to make sure that the variances were as they were. So there's no issue on our end. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Bye. All right. Um, panel members, so to the deferral. Um, Mr. Reed. <laughs> Yeah, as as you said, Chair, I think it's too bad because obviously the the applicant had made a lot of efforts to um, to minimize the impact of the house, and I think came up with a pretty elegant solution. But it's a it's a technical issue, so I move deferral of the application. Okay, so that's seconded by Ms. Chan. So motion to defer, moved by Mr. Reed, seconded by Ms. Chan. All in favor? Okay, that carries unanimously. And, and again, uh, Maria, please connect with the neighbors and, in, and as soon as you get everything sorted out with staff, they'll, they'll put it on the first agenda that they're mailing out for. Okay, um, item number 31, 62 Columbine Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have four form letters in support from number 44, 55, 60, and 64 Columbine, so that's both adjacent neighbors. Don't have any opposition speakers. Do I have the agent on the line? I'm Emily Nizikori. Agent for 62 Columbine. Okay. Panel members, we have two variances before us. Do you have any questions for the agent? Okay. We're ready to take this into committee um, to make a decision. Uh, we've read all the materials. Is there anything you want to add before we go into committee? Actually, no. I, I would wait for the decision of the committee. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Panel members, uh, Mr. Bayat. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, th this is essentially a, a dorma, um, a, a, a bringing out a dorma on the third, uh, presumably in the attic. It's a very straightforward uh, and uh, very useful kind of a, uh, approach to increasing space. I have no reason not to approve, uh, to uh, move a motion to approve. So I'd like to move forward with the motion to approve, no conditions. Alrighty, do I have a seconder? Mr. Reed. Okay, motion to approve. Moved by Mr. Bayat. Seconded by Mr. Reed. All in favor? That carries unanimously. Item number 32, 164 Princess Street. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, four photographs of the property, covering letter from the agent, and we have Heritage asking for a condition. Okay, do I have the agent on the line? My name is David Dow. I'm architect with Diamond Schmidt Architects, the applicant. Hi. Hi. Um, panel members, do you have any questions for the agent? Okay, sir, again, we've read all the material. Uh, the panel members don't have any questions. We're ready to make a decision on this. Uh, anything you want to add before we take it into committee? Uh, maybe just one uh, very simple statement is this is a contributing heritage building in a in downtown Toronto um, that our uh, my client is uh, endeavoring to reinvigorate. It's been it was derelict for quite a while before he bought it, um, and so we're really trying to upgrade in a sympathetic way. There has been some conversations we've had with heritage. Uh, most recently, uh, just a few days ago, where we, uh, like about a week ago, where we committed to work with them in terms of the modifications to the front entrance to make sure they were sympathetic, and also with the location of the mechanical, which you can see in the top right there, uh, there is a generator uh, that is closer to the street than they'd like, so we've committed to work with them to try and find a amenable solution for its placement and treatment. Okay, you. and you are aware of the Heritage Report? Right. Yes. Alrighty. Okay, let's take it into committee panel members. Mr. Clay. Sure, thanks, Chair. Um, this is a very commendable project. It's great to see um, these kinds of uh, older, presumably either industrial or commercial buildings uh, get renovated in this fashion and actually stay uh, commercial. 
Um, it's an area that is under uh, fairly significant development pressure. You can look around and see uh, numerous um, towers, some commercial, some residential. So I don't think this proposal at all would have any negative impact. In fact, I think it significantly contributes to the character of this neighborhood. Uh, so I would uh, uh, be happy to move approval of this application uh, subject to the heritage condition you mentioned. Okay, Ms. Chan, did you want to second that? Or did you have but a comment? Also, there's a, there's a planning condition about the uh, screening of the mechanical units, rooftop units. Oh. I, I think it's mentioned in the report, yeah. Oh, thank you. I missed that. A planning? Okay, hold yeah, on. Yeah, I will second that, yeah. That's part of the heritage condition. Uh, the it? heritage is talking about the front entry, so. Um, hold on. Yeah, well, yeah, that's in the that's in the heritage report. Prior to the issuance of a building permit, the owner shall explore options to relocate or redesign the rooftop mechanical unit to ensure it's minimally visible from the pub public realm. It's part of the heritage report. That, that's from the planning department, though. It's no, it's it's heritage. It's called it's the it's heritage. Um, it's the heritage. It's they've changed it now. It's like part of the planning division, but it's heritage planning, I think. It's heritage became part of urban design, like they used to be separated, but the, the titles kind of changed. If you see it there from Ann Fisher, program manager, heritage planning, urban design, city planning, it's kind of all one now. So we're talking, bottom line is we're talking about the same thing. Yeah, okay. Okay, did you want Thank a second you. Larry's motion? Uh, yeah, okay. So the motion is to approve the application, moved by Mr. Clay, seconded by Ms. Chen, including the heritage condition in the August 10th report. All in favor? That carries unanimously. Okay, the last item in this time slot is uh, item number 33, 66 Winona Drive. It's a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, and one photograph um, of the fire shutter that we have before us. A, we have one variance, and there are no opposition speakers listed. Do I have the agent on the line? Hi, Brian, you've been unmuted. Oh, good afternoon, committee. Uh, um, as you can see, it's pretty minor. It, it should have been included in the last hearing, but uh, with the client decided to go with a fire shutter instead of um, a fire rated window. And that uh, triggered the variance. And uh, as you can see from the photograph, it's pretty um, e easy to understand that it is very minor in nature. Okay. What more can I say? I don't think there's, are there any questions? All right, we're ready to take this into committee uh, for a decision. Panel members, this is indeed minor. Mr. Bayat. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, just a comment before I uh, move a motion. Uh, I, I, I've seen these sorts of shutters uh, in many parts of Europe, particularly in Italy, and I didn't realize they were called fire shutters. But <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I have no, no objection to it. I've just learned, I learned something new in the process. Um, since there are no conditions, there's a very, very minor uh, uh, variance. I'd like to move up a motion to approve no conditions attached. Okay, Mr. Reed is seconding, so motion to approve, moved by Mr. Bayat, seconded by Mr. Reed. All in favor? Okay, this motion carries unanimously. All righty, give me one second to go to a different file. Item number 34, 16 Maple View Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations. We have a covering letter from the agent. We have 14 form letters in support that include number 14, which is adjacent, um, more houses on Maple View, uh, McGregor Barris and Beresford Avenue. Um, I am showing one speaker in opposition. Do you have that person on the line, just so I know? 
I'm going to have to double check. I'm sorry? Um, yeah. I'll, I'll have to double check. Yeah, okay, that's right. Okay. Some of these users did not use their full name. Uh, okay, no worries. Let me, let me know. Okay. Okay. Um, do I have the agent on the line? Hi, Sandra. You've been unmuted. Sandra, are you there? Uh, uh, Madam Chair, I see the owners are in attendance. Okay. Do you want to give that a shot then? 30 seconds remaining. Guess not. <laughs> Hi, Vanessa. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Hi. Um. Hi, Vanessa. Are you speaking or is Mr. Smith, uh, we don't show him as being online, so are you speaking? No, it should be Sandra Smith. She's our architect and she's there. Okay. Um, I will, I, I, do we have her phone number? Maybe we can. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, do, you, do you see her, Sandra? That Sandra? was right. Sandra. So he just dialed her number and it was going to voicemail. Okay, yeah, if yeah. you can give it a shot, because uh, I don't think we're, we're seeing her as logged in, or we can't really, anyway, staff can't reach her, so if you want to give it a quick shot. Okay, I will do that. I will send her an email, and also call her. Okay, you call her, and I'll send her an email. Should we mute ourselves so you don't hear us? Yeah, you know what? Why don't I? Why don't I hold you down and I'll and I'll go to the next one and and I'll check back with you, so that I don't end up bumping you way down the list. I'll just check back. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So panel members, let's hold item thirty-four for now, and let's go to number thirty-five, which is five ninety-one Craven Road. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, two photographs of trees. We have a forestry asking for condition number two, correspondence in support from 567 and 595 uh, Craven Road, correspondence expressing concern from 324 uh, roads, and um, that's regarding a shared fence and uh, maple tree branches. Okay, um, I'm not showing any opposition speakers. Do I have the agent on the line? Hi, Barbara, you've been unmuted. Barbara, are you there? Barbara Kate Wepler. Barbara, you've been unmuted. She's there. I hear echoing. Okay, we're on item number 591, Craven Road. And Barbara Kate Wepler, if you can hear me, um, we're trying to get you uh, on the line. Apparently, you're unmuted. Are you there? Hi, Barbara. Barbara, are you there? You've been unmuted. I'm going to hold it 
down then. Okay, I'm gonna, panel members, I'm gonna hold this one down too. So we're going to move on to item 36. Or I'm, now I'm getting confused here. Okay, um, so that's here. All right, so item 36. Just give me a second. 46 Haslett Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have email correspondence from planning. They're asking for condition to tie to plans as well as opaque screening on the uh, north and south sides of the third floor balcony. I have opposition from number 44. And I am showing one speaker in opposition. Do I have the agent on the line? Please say yes. Here's Stephen King. Hi. Hi, the architect. Oh, the yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> um, I have one opposition speaker. Uh, do you have that person on the line? <laughs> All right, Mr. King, can you please do a presentation no more than five minutes, and then I'll go to the okay. opposition. Thanks. Okay. Uh, the proposal is to add a third floor primary bedroom addition. That's within the footprint of the house that's there, uh, plus a rear balcony off the third floor. Um, so the design extends the front roof line up at the same angle, so there's little impact on the view from the street at the front. Uh, the, the proposal is in keeping with the housing forms in the area, including the southern half of the semi-detached house at 44 Hazlitt, which has a full third floor addition. Uh, it goes up at the front all the way to the back. Um, we have the planner's report uh, and we accept the conditions of the, the uh, wall roof height tied to the plant uh, drawings and we accept the privacy screens at the side of the proposed rear balcony. Um, the owners have discussed the project with neighbors and have general support, although we don't uh, have letters for that. We have read the letter of objection from the neighbor at 44 Hazlitt. Uh, we do not accept the design comment of not fitting into the street. Um, as I said, the roof line extends up. So actually from the, from the street, it still looks like a two-story home uh, with a higher roof. Um, and also note that the design approved by the Committee of Adjustment for the property at 40, uh, 44 Hazlitt was uh, bigger than what we have. And I think it's fine. I think 44 is fine. <laughs> They're both fine, so um, our client didn't want to do something as big. Um, the construction issues noted by the neighbors at 44 Hazlitt, they do not relate to the variances. Uh, they're regulated by the billing department and the noise bylaws, so they're not, uh, they're not relevant to the variances. So in summary, the proposals, variance of coverage and wall roof height are minor and reasonable and are in keeping with the intent of the zoning bylaw and official plan and are similar to other projects of variances approved in the area. Uh, 150 square meters is a very reasonable size for a house in the beaches like that. So we would respectfully request the proposal be accepted. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, panel members, if you have questions, we'll hold them till after we hear from the opposition. Do you have... Um Ms. Phillips there. Hi, um, can you hear me? I can. Can you please state your name and address for the record and then we'll start the clock and you have five minutes. Absolutely. Catherine Phillips, owner of 48 Hazlitt, right next door to the proposal at 46. I have mentioned all of these concerns with, with the owners of 46, so there's no surprise, I'm sure. Number one is um, I'm worried about the sun blocking my deck and my second floor window. Um, I looked out the window uh, you know, on my deck about an hour ago and clearly even in the summertime, uh, it will a, a third floor at the back will block my sun, um, even worse in the winter. Um, so that is my big concern. Um, for both of those areas. The balcony, I have a small concern over in that it looks directly over my back deck. 
So for privacy reasons, I am concerned about the balcony. Uh, uh, third um, is a time frame question, and I may not be with the variance. I don't know. I, this is my first time doing it. I'm a lay person. But um, I would like to have a start date and an end date for this project. The homeowners have had a major renovation going on since, I think, 2012. Um, so I don't want this to be going on for years and years and years. Um, and then the fourth issue I have is the side window that will be on my side, um, the new window on the third floor. I, I was under the impression that you cannot add new windows. So that was my uh, question on the window that will face my house. Okay. Um, panel members, do you have any questions for the speaker? Okay, thank you very much, Katie. I'm going to go back to Mr. King and have him answer the questions um, that you just raised. Okay, uh, the first item, um, I mean, the project is within the envelope that's permitted, so we're not asking for extra length. Um, and as I said, the uh, this size of project is, I've you know had many, many projects of this scale approved in the beaches and right next door at 44 is actually a, a larger project so it's it's um part of living in the city that you have this you know scale of house uh, and three floors is reasonable um, and very often uh, approved um, the balcony we already uh, were agreeing to have uh, opaque um, panels on the side of the balcony so that would live at the overlook the time frame, that's not a variance, that's a construction issue. And um, people are allowed to renovate, you're allowed to renovate your own house uh, and take your time doing it. So um, and as I say, it's not a variance. Um, and then the side window, um, I don't think that's a variance either. Um, that has to be regulated by the building code. There are ways of closing off one window and opening up another one. Uh, as I say, that was not a, a variance. Um, so that would have to be within the uh, building code as permitted. Okay. Um, panel members, do you have any questions for Mr. King? Okay, we don't have any questions, but perhaps you can have your, uh, your client just keep in touch with the neighbors and letting them know what construction is happening when would be a okay. nice gesture. I know it's not part of our decision making, but it would be neighborly. Um, anyway, we're ready to go into committee. Uh, any discussion? Ms. Chan. Okay, I can start. Uh, I think that this is a, a quite a sensitive design uh, by, by sloping the roof uh, up uh, and you might minimize the impact on the street. And if there are only two variances and then I I think with the planning department condition, I'm ready to support this and move for approval. Okay, do I have a seconder? Mr. Bayat, so motion to approve. Moved by Ms. Chan, seconded by Mr. Bayat, including the condition from planning, which is to tie it to plans and opaque screening on the third floor balcony, north and south sides. All in favor? Okay, that carries unanimously. Item number 37, 85 Condor. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have an arborist report prepared by Brightleaf, covering letter from the agent, and seven form letters in support from 83 Condor, which is adjacent, 23 Dawson, as well as residents on Queen Victoria Street. And uh, I believe we only have two variances before us. Do I have the agent on the line? Smith, I'm the agent for the application at 85 Condor Avenue. Hi, sorry, I can barely hear you. I just didn't get your name. I, I know I have it written here. It, it's Jay Smith, agent for the application. Okay, great, thanks. Um, I don't think we need a presentation. Panel members, any questions on this one? Okay, Mr. Smith, we're ready to take this into committee to make a decision. Anything you want to add? Uh, no, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Okay, panel members, we're in committee. Mr. Reed. 
Thanks, Chair. Um, this is a very reasonable and measured application with just small additions on the second floor in the front and in the rear and retaining the existing footprint. I can see no negative impacts. And so I move approval of this with no conditions. Okay, do I have a second or Mr. Bayat? So motion to approve, moved by Mr. Reed, seconded by Mr. Bayat. All in favor? Okay, this carries unanimously. Item number 38, 30 Rosevere Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey site plan, floor plans and elevations, presentation materials from the owner. They were received late and were in our supplemental agenda. We have email correspondence from um, planning uh, regarding privacy screening on the east side of the third floor deck and forestry is asking for condition number two. And again, we only have, um, no, actually I'm looking at the wrong thing. Okay. Um, do I have the agent on the line? Hi there. Uh, this is Alana Sheehan. Uh, I'm owner of 30 Rose Beer along with my husband, Malcolm. Okay. Um, I don't have any opposition speakers, panel members. Do you have any questions for the owner? No? Okay, Alana, we, um, we're, we've read all the materials. We're ready to take this into committee for a decision. Is there anything you want to add that's not in the materials that were submitted? We did get your presentation materials. Um, uh, community planning did make contact, contact with us last week and they proposed uh, privacy screening. Right. Um, so we'd be happy to comply with those recommendations. Okay, and that would be on the east side of the third floor uh, deck, right? I believe they said east and west, and we'd be, we'd be happy to do, okay. do either or both. Okay. All right, panel members, um, we'll take it into committee for a decision. Mr. Bayat. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, again, this is a fairly straightforward uh, application. The only conditions that apply are forestry number two and the planning conditions regarding screening. Uh, I'd like to move the motion to approve. Okay, and do I have a seconder? Mr. Reed. So a motion to approve, including forestry condition number two, and conditions for privacy screening on the third story deck, east and west side, uh, moved by Mr. Bayat, seconded by Mr. Reed. All in favor? Okay, this motion carries unanimously. Uh, I just want to go back <laughs> to item 34. Okay. All right. Uh, do we have the agent now? Okay. Off the phone? Off the phone. Hi, Sandy. You've been unmuted. Okay, thank you. Hi, can you hear me? I can. Um, can you just state your name for the record, please? Sandy Smith. Uh, sorry about that. No worries. Um, okay, so uh, we're, we're, I'll just read this again. Uh, item 34, 16 Maple View. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. Covering letter from the agent. 14 form letters in support, uh, including the adjacent uh, neighbor and number 14. Um, other residents on Maple View, McGregor, Beresford. And I don't have any uh, conditions and, um, hang on a second here, 34, 34. Okay, one second, Sandra, what about the opposition? Were you ever able to reach them or not? The um, Roy Angela. Because if, if we don't have them, then I can go to questions. Try it. Okay. Sorry? Two Roy Longman. Okay. So try that. Um, Sandra, I'm going to see if the members have any questions. Panel members, do you have any questions for the agent? Okay. Sandra, we don't have any questions. We're actually ready to make a decision, but there's 
we're just having problems getting uh, people listed here on the line. Is there anything you want to add while we're trying w one final time to, to reach um, the person listed here? Um, you're, uh, you're muted. I don't know. Did you hit the mute button? I can s hold yeah. on. I think we did it here. Hold on. I was going to the link. Huh? I was going to the other speaker. There was a registered speaker. That yeah, that's yeah. what I asked. No, that those are the owners, right? The second one. So the Roy and you. S um, I see two Roy's. I'm going to confirm. You're going to confirm. I just thought while you're doing that, if there's anything. Okay, go ahead. I you can't can do confirm it. without you. Okay, that. never mind. We can't do that at the same time. Okay, we're going to try this person. Okay. Hi, Mr. Hi, Angelo. Mr. You've been unmuted. Okay, Sandra, we're, we're unable to, uh, to reach this person, so uh, the panel members don't have any questions. Is there anything you want to add before we take it into committee? I don't. It's a straightforward application. Three variances, um, 14 letters of support. Um, I have no further comments. Okay. Um, panel members, we're in committee. Mr. Clay. Sure, I'll take this one, Chair. Uh, I would agree with the agent. This is very straightforward. Um, it's a modest uh, addition off the rear, um, and the number of variances are quite small. I, I would also congratulate uh, the owner and the agent for going around and getting all the uh, support from the neighbors. Frankly, that that uh, that does help us an awful lot when we deliberate on these matters, so good on you. Um, I will uh, move approval of this application, and uh, I don't think there are any conditions. No, there aren't. Um, Ms. Chan, are you seconding? Okay, so motion to approve, moved by Mr. Clay, seconded by Ms. Chan. All in favor? That carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's try. <laughs> let's try to deal with 35. Were you able to get the agent on that one? Having a few issues. She's had uh, what issues? Can she can she come in by phone? Hi, Barbara. You've been unmuted. Oh, can you hear me? Barbara, are you there? Okay, I think I heard you, but uh, you sounded so far away. Hello. 
this is Barbara Kate Wepler. Can you hear me? I can now. Okay. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Great. Yes, All right. I can hear you. Hi. Sorry. We've been having audio issues, even though I've been on the line since 3 p.m. <laughs> All right. Um, let me see. I don't, we don't need a presentation. Uh, I'm not sure if the panel members have any questions. Let me check. We don't have any, any questions. Um, is there anything that you want to add? I notice you have uh, support from the adjacent neighbor as well as um, another neighbor. And I assume you read about the uh, concerns expressed regarding the shared fence and the maple tree branches and hopefully you can have a discussion with that neighbor about that. Um, but we're ready, yes, we we're ready to we go into the committee. So is there anything you wanna add? Um, no, I have, I have nothing to add. We're aware of the, um, the letters of support and the concern of our neighbor on road. Okay, thank you. Panel members, we are in committee. Mr. Baya. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think this is a fairly straightforward uh, new build. Uh, there are no, uh, no issues uh, except for forestry number two. So there are no other conditions attached. I think most of the variances are very minor. So I'd like to move uh, approval with uh, forestry condition number two. Okay, do I have a seconder, Mr. Reed? So a motion to approve including forestry condition, moved by Mr. Bayat, seconded by Mr. Reed. All in favor? Okay, that motion carries unanimously. Um, item number 39, 289 Blackthorn Avenue. Um, okay. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey site plan floor plans and elevations. We have a photograph of the property and a covering letter from the agent. Um, and I don't have any conditions. Do I have the agent on the line? And, and just as a side note, there was verbal support from both adjacent homes from what I read in the covering letter. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. This is Bamdad Baghdadi from BBA Design Studio, Inc. I'm the applicant and ar uh, the architect. And actually, one of the neighbors uh, signed the paper, and it's been submitted in AIC. Okay. Um, so I showed the, uh, one of the ad adjacent neighbors listed here as a speaker. Is he the, on the line? So, Mr. Baghdadi, I'm just going to go to this person, because according to what I read, both are in support, so I'm not in, not sure if he's in support or if he has a concern. So I'll come back to you in a second. Sure. Uh, hi there. Am I unmuted? Yeah, you are. Hi, I this is Michael Monahan, homeowner of 287 Blackthorn Avenue. So are you uh, are you opposed or are you in support? Uh, I am in concern. I have concern. Okay. So I spoke briefly. Yep. Sorry? Yeah, no, I was going to suggest if you can just express your concern and then perhaps Mr. Baghdadi can address it. For sure. Yeah, I spoke briefly with the homeowner and he informed me that there's some underpinning that's happening. I can see that within the drawings. Uh, I guess just my concern going forward would be before signing off and feeling comfortable underpinning that party wall would be seeing a copy of the engineer's report and reviewing any structural detailed drawings that there would have to be. Okay, so we can, um, you know, we can just make note in, in the notes, but that's not under committee's jurisdiction. That is something that you're gonna have to work out with the owner next door and or his agent. So I will get Mr. Baghdadi to speak to that and hopefully he can make a commitment to, um, you know, to give you the assurances you need. Is it, am I correct in understanding that I will have to sign off on an agreement uh, for the underpinning? Well, see, these are all private, like private issues. The the committee only deals with the planning, vari like the variances that are before us. We don't deal with um, all the other things that are involved with with these type of, um, you know, this type of construction. I think okay. that that you know, I mean, you always, if if it's a semi, I mean, it's it's the be better ways to to have agreements between neighbors and to get along. So. Again, it's something you have to work out with them. I honestly don't know if there's a legal requirement to sign any agreements or not. I think it's just 
for the reassurance of both parties, but again, I, I really can't speak to that from a legal perspective. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Baghdadi, can you maybe weigh in on this? Sure, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you to our neighbor. And yes, uh, we can assure our neighbor. First of all, they have to sign a party wall agreement letter and because we are going to underpin the party wall, if, um, which for sure we will share the construction drawings and the engineering report with them. And if they feel comfortable, they will sign that agreement so we can underpin the party wall. They don't have to pay, uh, make any payment. We do it uh, for them. So in case in future they want to do the same, it's already done. So they're saving some money. And that's what I can add. Okay. Panel members, do you have any questions for Mr. Baghdadi? Okay, sir, we have no questions um, on uh, with respect to the variances, so hopefully you can um, work all the other things out with the neighbor. It sounds like the owner's willing to do that. Is there anything you want to add before we go into committee? No, I just, uh, since most of the time we are get unmuted uh, after the committee, so we don't get a chance to thank committee. I just want to thank committee for my previous application and this application regardless of the decision they make. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, we're in committee, Ms. Chan. Yeah, I can start with this one. I, I think that even with the increase in the GFA, it's still a very modest home, and there are only two variances, and I... I also understand that they will work with the neighbor uh, concern uh, with the construction concerns. So I move for approval uh, with no conditions. Okay, um, and that's seconded by Mr. Bayat. So motion to approve, moved by Ms. Chan, seconded by Mr. Bayat. All in favor? Okay, this motion carries unanimously. Um, okay, item number. 40. 25 Delaney Crescent. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, a covering letter from the owners, correspondence in support from number 29, 21, 23 and 27. So both adjacent property owners are in support. And I don't show any opposition speakers on this one. Okay, do I have the agent on the line? Uh, hello, can you hear me? I can. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Byron Escobar. I'm working from TVM Engineers. I'm the agent for uh, 25 Delaney Crescent. And uh, basically, I just want to add um, that is a straightforward application. We're um, rebuilding a rear addition. We're trying to make it um, uh, as wide as the land. The land is really small. So the only problems that we have here are the setbacks. Um, therefore, I am, in our mind, it's just a little um, change to the bylaws. Okay, and you're speaking on behalf of the owner, correct? Yes, we're the agent for the owner, yes. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's just I have the owner listed here. I just want to make sure you're speaking on behalf of the owner. Yes. Um, okay, panel members, do you have any questions? Uh, Ms. Chan. Yes, I'd like to, um, uh, you to clarify where is number two. I do not know uh, whether I can understand it. it where are the main walls that have zero distance? Where is number two? Okay. Can you uh, clarify or explain that to me, please? Uh, sorry, uh, if you are looking for, for understanding the, the location of the addition? Yes, uh, yes, I, I don't quite understand uh, it on the plan. We, we have, yeah, we have already, we have already an addition. If you take a look of the side plan there, we have an existing one-story addition on the rear, and the, yeah, the, the side plan right there. Thank you. Yeah, we have already an addition. Yeah, the main the main building we're not working on on that, so on interior alterations. We have already one addition that is uh, really old, it's 1913, and that addition is actually attached to the neighbor on the other side. So uh, the idea is to rebuild that addition, and and the situation is we want to do it uh, 
wider and a little bit longer. We have no problems with the coverage or, or floor space index or that kind of problems. It's only the fact that we want to go closer to the property line on, on the numbers 27 and 23. The house is attached to 23, but the, the, the missing wall between 25 and 23 is already in bad shape. Uh, if you take a look of the, the documentation that we have on the correspondence, the owner actually sent pictures showing that existing um, party wall that is uh, it was just plaster. So where we were the plan would be to, to rebuild that wall in the same place where it is now. Uh, but now we have the situation saying we have to have a, um, a setback from there. So in that case, that means the neighbor will have to do their own wall on their side, like, and they are not really doing into construction. So the idea would be to rebuild for them that party wall and, and do it like properly by separation and whatever is required on the building code. Okay, so it is a, a existing condition, you just be building those walls. Uh, yeah, right Right now the existing condition, yeah, but it's really old, so it's, it's not really good for party wall. So the <laughs> idea would be to redo it, but redo it right. Okay, yeah, that makes that makes sense. I can understand that now. Okay, thank you. No problem. And Mr. Baya. Uh, <clears throat> just a quick question with regard to the balcony on the, I believe it's on the second floor, Drea? Yes. Do you have any screening on it? Doesn't seem that there's anything. I think it's uh, drawing A17. Yeah, I'm going through the drawings. Yeah, it should be there. Uh, if we miss that, uh, I'm trying to go through the sections. No, I don't see the screen, but no, for sure we have to put the screen. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, we have to, we have to. Any other questions, panel members? Okay, Mr. Escobar, we're ready to go into committee. Anything you want to add before we uh, make a decision? And the only thing we have, we do have a support for all the neighbors there, and that's the only thing. And, and thank you very much for your work. Okay, so you, and you're okay with a condition for uh, sc okay. opaque screening on the second floor balcony, right? Oh, totally, totally. Okay. It should be there, actually. It should be there. All right, um, let's take it into committee, panel members. Mr. Baya. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to move a motion uh, to approve uh, with the sole condition, and that is that the second floor balcony uh, be uh, constructed with opaque screening. And I would, I'm, I'm not sure what direction that's in, but on presumably both sides of the I think east, east, east and, and west. west. East and west. Yeah, that's Thank what you. staff tells me. Okay. Do I have a seconder for that motion, Mr. Reed? So motion to approve, including opaque screening on the second floor balcony on the east and west side, moved by Mr. Bayatz, seconded by Mr. Reed. All in favor, that carries unanimously. Item number 41, 398 Leslie Street. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We revised site plan, floor plans, and elevations covering letter from the agent. We have an arborist uh, report and tree protection plan from Al Miley and Associates, presentation materials from the agent. We have email correspondence from planning. They have a condition. Forestry is asking for conditions one and two correspondence expressing concern from number 406 Leslie Street as well as opposition uh, from somebody without an address, 404 Leslie and another one without a name or an address. Okay, uh, do I have um, the agent on the line? Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair and committee members. My name is Christian Chen on behalf of the owners of 398 Leslie Street, 398 Leslie Street Limited. 
Okay, well, welcome back. Um, I have one opposition speaker here, so let me, do we have him? Okay, can you do a presentation, please? No more than five minutes. Great, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd just like to ask staff to turn to the August 9th, 2022 plans, the revised plans that were submitted, and just go to the first page, please. So this is a residential fourplex that's being proposed for 398 Leslie Street. Um, this is uh, definitely a design that this committee has seen before and approved at 193 Christie Street, 2340 Gerard, 574 Davenport Road, 464 Oakwood. So this is something that has definitely come through this uh, meeting chambers before. And uh, so what we are proposing is to construct this three-story, four-unit uh, fourplex. Uh, there also is a laneway suite that is proposed in the rear yard of the property that is compliant with the zoning bylaw provisions for laneway suites. So we are not seeking variances for that uh, fifth unit as a laneway suite. So we've had discussions with community planning and this has happened throughout the application process and we are advised that community planning does not have any remaining concerns with the proposal. There was a concern with regards to the rooftop terrace. Uh, they requested us to alter the rooftop terrace to peel it back from the roof edge so as to it for not to be seen from the public realm. So this is why we submitted the revised plans on August 9, 2022, and understand that uh, city planning has provided a report recommending the uh, approval, should it be approved, be a tie to the plans. And this would be the plans on August 9th. So just in terms of a little bit of context, Gerard East is approximately 150 meters, so a minute and a half walk south of the site. There's a TTC streetcar stop right at the intersection along the 506 streetcar route. In terms of the immediate context, if I can ask staff to pull up some of the photos that are provided in the submission materials. Uh, 423 A, B, and C, Leslie Street. This is all in the immediate context of a similar built form that is proposed. Um, it's a row house project that has main wall heights that are similar to what is being proposed here. We can see it in photo number six. Um, 451 to 452 Leslie Street. There's multiple missing middle examples that exist throughout the immediate context and in the geographic neighborhood. Uh, there's also an example of Riverdale Mews to the north end of this section of Leslie Street, as well as a number of row houses at 411 to 419 Leslie Street. With regards to the variances, we're seeking a side yard setback of 0 0.45 from the 1.2 provision. This is one that's commonly asked for for a fourplex that has been before the committee as well. We are seeking the same side yard setback that would be afforded to a detached or semi-detached house in this situation. Uh, there, for the prevailing character, there are numer numerous examples of small side yard setbacks in the immediate context. Um, I do provide in my report in the, the last point, the list of those houses. With respect to the building depth, we are asking for a, a one centimeter increase over the existing building depth. Um, the building depth is less than the building depth to the north at 400 Leslie Street, if I can ask staff to turn back to the site plan, as well as being less than the existing building depth of the existing home on the site. Uh, so the depth of the proposed fourplex is uh, approximately six feet less than the existing home. Uh, when I took a look at the immediate context, the building depths in, on the same side of Leslie Street, buildings on the properties at 390 to 412, 416 Leslie Street, they all have building depths greater than 17 meters. And this is the same on the east side for number 395, 397, 403, 405, 425, 427, 443, and 445. With regards to the building heights, I understand that we are seeking a variance for 3.46 meters above the 10 meter requirement. This is for an element for the rooftop access stairs and solely for that element. So of course I can understand how the city planning would like us to tie the plans, uh, tie the approval to the elevations, just to reflect the fact that we're not actually seeking a variance for a 13.46 meter overall height uh, for that roof enclosure access, access enclosure. So we are also seeking main wall heights for 13.46 meters that are reflective also of measuring to the top of that element. And of course, again, tying it to the plans. So we're not seeking any variances or building permits approved for a height of 13.46 meters for the totality of the height. With regards to the FSI variance, this is the final variance, 1.09 times a lot of the area. So as you can see on the uh, decisions chart, there are a number of uh, buildings in the immediate context that in fact have a higher FSI. For example, at 208 Leslie Street, there's a one point. 1.4 FSI in the geographic neighborhood, FSIs of 2.18 times have been approved in Hastings Avenue, 
as we can also see that the range of COA decisions uh, are frequently both in the geographic neighborhood and in the immediate context approaching uh, 0 0.7 to 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and, and 1.1 uh, 1 and above. This is the normal um, bill form context in this area with respect to COA decisions that are going through in the last 10 years. So with my respectful submission, uh, the variances that are proposed uh, for this application uh, meet the four tests. I'd just like to also add, as I've said in other applications for these four plex projects, it's carrying out the goals and visions of the EHON, um, expanding housing options in neighborhoods directive that the city planning department has advanced to council as well as uh, following the intent of the draft official plan amendment for multiplexes that was put forth for consultation um, in May 2022. So you're at five and a half minutes now, so. Great, thank you, Madam Chair. Those are my comments. Thanks. Do you have... Um opposition great hello uh, madam speaker uh, this is Robert Clare I am speaking in opposition great are you on uh, are you uh, at 404 Leslie I am okay I uh, will start the clock now you have five minutes Thank you, I'll keep it short. Uh, I have a couple of, of concerns. One is that uh, the agent uh, represented this uh, project as being consistent with the row houses across the street, but uh, this project is not a row house. So I, I don't understand the relevance of that argument. The, uh, I, I think uh, as well, uh, he didn't mention the most important variant, uh, which is that uh, the, the floor space index for the for the lot that's approved is 0 0.6 and he's proposing uh, 1.09 which is an 82 percent increase over the maximum allowable floor space for that lot so this is not a minor variance this is a very big building being crammed into a very small lot so uh, I believe that uh, there should be more density in the area and on that lot I do not think that a project of this uh, scope and scale is appropriate for the lot in question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, panel members, do you have any questions for the speaker? Okay, thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Chan, um, we'll have you back to address the comments made by Mr. Thank Claire. you, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, I can understand Mr. Kerr's concerns with respect to built form. Uh, I'm speaking from the perspective of a streetscape. When we take a look at the, the row houses across the street, it does present as a three-story building, a row of three, three houses, three dwelling units to the street facade. And there are numerous examples of uh, flat roof buildings of two and three stories that are spread throughout the geographic neighborhood that are common in this geographic neighborhood that I've uh, exemplified both in the submissions uh, for the photos with respect to floor space index, yes, I did address this in my initial comments. And I do note that I've provided a decisions matrix as part of the submission materials that prove, uh, especially in the immediate context on Leslie Street, this is the immediate block. But there are a number of examples of FSIs that are, are in fact um, in around the same range in, or above than what we're proposing. 28 Leslie Street has an FSI of 1.14. 217B Leslie Street has 1.02. 223 Leslie Street has 1.07, 253 Leslie Street has 0 0.8. So it definitely, in my uh, research and my um, uh, analysis of both the Committee of Adjustment decisions as well as the existing bill form context, it's certainly common for FSIs to be in a range of at least from, of course, the, uh, uh, the maximum permitted zoning of 0 0.6, but up into and including 1.14. And those are my responses. I'd just like to add too that there is an urban forestry condition number one and two. Uh, I understand that some of the other letters that were submitted to the committee that there was a uh, concern about the tree in the rear yard. Our arborist report does mention the fact that it is recommended to be removed. However, the imposition of condition one, or, one and two of urban forestry's conditions will also require us to apply for the permit and just to address the concerns of that resident with respect to the tree is that yes, the city of Toronto will do their own independent review of the health of that tree, whether it should be removed or not. And uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, you're aware of the planning condition? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, and we have no concerns. 
Okay. All right. Any questions? Uh, Ms. Chan, then Mr. Clay. Yes, I'd like to ask the uh, rooftop terrace. Uh, are you proposing uh, clear glass for the guards? Is that the, it looked like an adjoining uh, the clear glass? Yeah. Yes, it appears uh, so uh, on the elevation plans and, of course, on the rendering from the front. But should it um, should the committee wish to impose a condition to have opaque privacy screening, I'm sure that wouldn't be a concern to my client. Uh, uh, one of those concerns was uh, right, raised by city planning in that they wanted to have the edge of those rail guards being pulled back from the edge of the parapet in order to increase privacy and reduce overlook. So if should the committee wish to impose opaque screening for belts and suspenders, uh, I'm sure my client would be amenable to that condition as well. Thank you. Okay, that's my, that, yeah, that's what I will recommend, I think. Okay, Mr. Clay, and then Mr. Thanks. Bayat. Thanks, yeah, yeah, my question was very similar. Uh, I, I wanted to ask, though, um, the rooftop terrace, so that looks from the plans that it is exclusive to the top unit, is that correct? Uh, yes, sir, and the reason being is because we can see here, especially in this section, that all the other units have access to their amenity areas. Uh, the basement has access to the front and rear yard. The, the main floor has uh, balconies on the front and rear. The second floor has balconies on the front and rear. And then the OIC as well on the third story there, there is, there is a balcony as well. Uh, so it would be an amenity terrace for the use of that third, uh, third floor unit. I'd just like to also add that pursuant to the EHON OPA, the multiplexes is that uh, this, this development, as with the other five that have been approved by the C of A and T-Lab, is that they are family-sized units, they are large units, as also one of the policies, uh, draft policies for the OPA for multiplexes that's being advanced to council by city staff. Uh, great, and it looks like from the rendering that the the, the balconies, are, they're already screened, to look, or at least they're in, in, are they set in, or are they, well, maybe the third floor doesn't look like it's screened. That's right. Uh, so we might want to put some screening around the third floor balcony as well. But that what my real question was is, is it's often not as much, uh, well, it is overlooked, but uh, the fact that the city has asked you to set them back, that's that's a good thing. But if you got any, it's mostly about sound, right? When you get a, a, a rooftop terrace, have you, are you giving any kind of thought to sound attenuation? Uh, sir, one of the things I can offer too, if, if there's a condition that could be placed, and I've certainly had these conditions uh, applied to other applications before, is that there shall be no amplified uh, sound or music on, on the rooftop terrace or any of the terraces. This is commonly applied to commercial patios, but certainly if, if, should it be imposed for a residential uh, roof terrace, and that's something that I believe my client would also be um, uh, supportive of. Yeah, that's great. I, I I was thinking more in the context of you know, soft you know s sort of shrubbery or something like that. Just just to kind. Of, I mean, we I don't think we can necessarily put in a condition in there, but I think it would be uh, helpful um, to have um, some sort of remediation that deals uh, or sort of limits or mitigates you know sound uh, travel because the sound it looks like this is going to get well used by uh, unit three. Uh, yes, sir. Should there should be any conditions to, to, to implement planters along the edge, then I, I'm sure that can be something that could be uh, worked with from a design perspective as well. Yeah, that would, I think that would be good. Like I say, our experience on this committee is it's often the rooftop terraces that gets the neighbor's attention a lot. And uh, the, the degree to which we can minimize negative impacts on the surrounding neighbors, I think we should try and do that. Mr. Bayat? Um, basically, Mr. Clay and uh, Ms. Chan have already have raised those questions, but I would just like to comment that I find it quite an interesting design, um, and I think it uh, will fit in quite well uh, in the neighborhood. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Um, so I think we're ready to take this into committee then. Um, so panel members, just from what I heard, are we going to be looking at putting a condition on for third floor deck opaque screening and then uh, no amplified sound on any of the terraces and planters on the edges of the third 
third story deck is is that what and we balcony want? and balcony. The roof, yeah. I think I think that's for the rooftop deck chair right yeah yeah for the rooftop deck okay miss Chan yeah with all those conditions I I I, I, I think I can support this um design actually I think that I agree with uh, 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 Sahi it is a very good design I think that uh, producing some really good quality you abandoned units and I, I i i think that is a good uh, uh, proposal um okay you want me to move a motion well, i go ahead i don't see anybody else chiming in i i think that mr clay and mr byatt sort of expressed the things they wanted inserted. So with those conditions and then the planning condition as well as forestry one and two. One and two, yes. So I move for approval, yeah. Okay, so with those conditions, Ms. Chan moves approval and the seconder is Mr. Bayat. All in favor? Okay, so that motion carries unanimously. Okay, I'd like to take five minutes before we do the last two. I need to jump up and down. It's really cold <laughs> in here. It's was that the you sorry? Start, the, you have to start wearing your parka. Uh, listen, me and Sylvia <laughs> are wearing shawls like oh, it's freezing in here. Okay, sorry, Sylvia. The third story balcony that was just the rear third story balcony for, mm -hmm. and that's on the, I think it was the on both east sides. and west. I guess let me just double check. Double no, check north and south. Know. Okay, both sides. Yeah, north and south. Okay, so we'll be back at, um, how about 520? Sounds good. Okay.
Okay. Um, all right. Hopefully Zaheer and Yim will be here in a second. All right. So the next item is item number 42, which is 128 MacDonnell Avenue. We have before us a copy of the minutes from the May 18th uh, public hearing, copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, a covering letter from the agent. We have five form letters in support that include number 126 and 130, both adjacent neighbors as well as other residents on McDonnell, and a 10 signature petition in support uh, from occupants um, of McDonnell Avenue and Galley Avenue. And I am not showing any opposition speakers on this one. Uh, do I have the agent on the line? Hi, this is Timothy Mitinidis. I'm the agent for the owners, representing the owners. Hi, I don't think we need a presentation. Uh, panel members, do you have any questions for the agent? Doesn't appear there are any questions. Um, we did read your covering letter uh, and all the material from the last time. Is there anything you wanna add before we go into committee? Uh, not at this moment, thank you. Okay, we're into committee panel members. Mr. Baya. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, despite the fact that there are six uh, variances being requested, I don't believe any of them are uh, major. They're all fairly minor. Um, so I, and, and I don't think there are any other, um, any, uh, conditions attached to this particular application, I'd be quite happy to move a motion to approve without any conditions. Okay, so the motion to approve um, without any condition moved by Mr. Bayat, seconded by Mr. Clay, all in favor? That carries unanimously. And the final item today is item number 43, 44 Nursewood Road. We have before us copy of the minutes from the July 6th public hearing, copy of the plan of survey, revised site plan, floor plans and elevations, presentation materials from the agent. We have email correspondence from planning. They're asking for a screening on the rear third uh, story balcony. Forestry is asking for conditions one and two. And then they also sent us a, an advisory uh, report regarding the tree that's in the front. We have correspondence in opposition from number 30, 20, and from number 42, Nursewood, which is adjacent, as well as 46, Nursewood. I'm showing two speakers in opposition. Uh, do I have the agent on the line? Hi, Mehdi, you've been unmuted. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Nushin Mozafari uh, from Hyphen Studio, representing the case today. I'm sorry, uh, what's your name? Nushin, N-O-U-S-H-I-N, last name Mozafari, M-O-Z-A-F-F-A-R-I. S-S-A... F-F, like Frank, Frank, A-R-I. Uh -huh. A-R-I, and I'm sorry, can you spell your first name again? Because we have a different name listed here. I have Mehdi Ajvand. Yeah, uh, he couldn't uh, make it. Uh, my first name is Nushin, N-O-U-S-H-I-N. All right. Um, I have two speakers listed in opposition. So can you do a presentation, please, no more than five minutes? Yes, sure. Uh, this application has uh, came a long way. Uh, 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 similar application has been before committee on March second, uh, with eleven variances. Uh, in that uh, application, we removed the landscaping and soft landscaping variances uh, in back and forth with the planner, uh, and uh, we try to. Uh, communicate with the neighbors as well. Uh, but that application was refused anyway. Uh, 
and we came back uh, to the committee with this uh, same revised uh, application on July 6, but uh, unfortunately, wrong public notice was sent out based on the previous application. So uh, since the committee wasn't sure that the neighbors are aware of the revision, uh, they deferred the case. And here we are today for the third time uh, with this revised application with only five variances uh, on top of landscaping and soft landscaping variances that were removed on the first uh, version. We have removed the length and depth uh, variances, uh, the number of platforms on rear wall, and also north side setback variance is removed. Uh, uh, and on top of this, we have uh, improved the FSI to uh, 0.94. And uh, I think uh, we have a very straightforward and minor uh, application today. Uh, in summary, we are asking for wall height on the side walls, uh, 9.98 meter instead of 9.5 meter. Variance number two and four are for the height of the first floor and the uh, porch. Uh, these two variances are basically the same. And um, our first proposed first floor is one foot higher than a load. Uh, variance number three is FSI, uh, which is a very common variance in the neighborhood. Uh, and the last one is the total height under the old bylaw. The total height of the proposal uh, is complying with the new bylaw. And this is uh, under old bylaw because the means of uh, height measurement uh, is different under the old bylaw. And uh, I don't have anything else to add at this point. Uh, okay, uh, well, I I'll, that's, to answer any questions. yeah, that's fine. We'll hold our questions till after. So I'm gonna go sure. to the opposition and then I'll have you back and you'll have five minutes to address concerns raised by the uh, speakers. Chair, Chair, might I, I'm yeah. sorry for interrupting, yeah, but just one question, cause I was on this, uh, when this was brought forward before I remember Specifically, one of the things the committee uh, requested the applicant to do was have extensive discussions with the neighbors. And I, I, I just want to find out uh, whether any of those discussions actually happened or not. Uh, yes, the discussions uh, happened even for the first application, uh, specifically with the North neighbor. Uh, they had mostly concerns about the uh, having access to the facilities that they have on their side yard. And uh, we have removed the side setback. And also, uh, we are then uh, this new uh, revision that you have in front of you is basically complying with the allowed building envelope. We are not asking for any length, depth, side setback, or front and yeah. rear setbacks. Yeah, I get that. Sorry for interrupting. I just get that. I just wanted to make sure that uh, the applicant um, had uh, further discussions with the surrounding neighbors. It sounds like they have. Okay. Um, so I would like to go to, um, is it Mizu? Yes. Hello. Yes, it's Livio Ratner. Hi, can I just have your address for the record, please? 46 Nursewood Road. Okay. Um, you have five minutes, sir, starting now. Thank you very much. Um, Madam Chair, after the July 6th uh, committee uh, of adjustment deferred decision, there was absolutely no contact whatsoever, and that's to respond to Mr. Clay's uh, question. Um, and also, uh, none of the recommendations 
put forward by the committee were addressed. Plans were not changed. Um, the cover letter with the history of the changes were, was not done. The plans were exactly the same as they were uh, back in March. Um, the only thing that happened is that the uh, applicant removed uh, some of the variances from the list, uh, which we described in the, in the letter that we submitted to the committee. And uh, the rest are covered according to the applicant by the zoning review waiver. My, our main question is that the drawing and the, the applicant repeated right now that the uh, side uh, distance between uh, the proposed building and our building was modified. It was not. The only thing, and you can look at on page five of the of the drawing. The only thing is that instead of measuring the distance between the property line and the uh, wall of the new proposed building, uh, they measured it and where it's three feet wide. But there is a bulk coming out, there is a box, I don't know if it's fireplace or whatever it is, which remains at uh, at uh, uh, 46 centimeters, which was exactly uh, what, uh, what we objected to in our uh, pre uh, first and second su submission. The reason being that this uh, uh, box is six feet, six inches long, and it's exactly in front of our side door and also the uh, uh, utilities we have. Uh, in error, we call this an AC. In effect, is a heat exchanger. Uh, that it's, it has to be accessible in winter, in winter as well as in the summer. Uh, I am concerned that the fact that by uh, they re changed the uh, distance between the property line and their new wall uh, without addressing the narrowest the, the uh, portion of it is is very misleading number one number two on the same point is we don't have any guarantee that in the future they will not build even a fence and that will that will narrow even more the distance and make it actually the uh, private right of way or easement whatever we want to call it to our side door forget about windows and something else impracticable so this in addition to what we we uh, we said in our letter of uh, that we submitted to the committee, this is our main uh, main concern, that the, the drawings are misleading. That's all I had to say, Madam Chair. Okay, um, Mr. Ratner, can you just confirm that you're at 46 Nursewood because my sheet says 42. 40, 40. No, 46 N Nursewood, the north, on yeah. the north side of the applicant. Okay, so you're at 46, not 42. Okay, um, panel members, do you have any questions for Mr. Ratner? No? Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Hi, Judy, you've been unmuted. Yes. Thank you, good afternoon. Uh, we are reside at number 42, which is on the south side of the uh, building in question. And <clears throat> we are also concerned about the variants that are no longer identified on this submission, only because we were told that the applicant has chosen to waive the review process and is assuming responsibility for their own variances. So one thing with the extension into the back, we are concerned that we will lose the privacy we have on our current deck and in our dining area in the back and we would like to request some sort of screening be added to the design of their balcony off of the rear of the building to allow us to have some privacy. We're especially concerned about the character of the house and we did send some photographs uh, with our submission and we also sent a photograph showing how much, <coughs> excuse me, how much privacy we have from the trees in the front yard that protect us not only visually but acoustically from the the uh, Queen Street turnaround and the, forest, the forestry 
urban forestry did deny the variance, but we're not sure if you look at the photographs how it's possible that they can do the demolition a new construction without killing the trees in the front of the house and the tree that we have, which is a you know, 20 foot uh, white spruce that is beside our house. And these, this would greatly have an impact on our privacy and the use of our front porch and uh, balcony off of the bedroom on the second story. Um, the house has, just as an aside, we're all, I mean, we're concerned structurally about the impact as well of the demolition based on the fact that we're sitting on sand and soil, and I know you have nothing to say about that. But we had just found out that the house has been put up for sale as a teardown, and the listing actually indicates that the demolition permit and approved plans are ready the end of August for the new owner. So this is totally misleading, and we're very concerned about that being in the listing for the, uh, the sale of the house. And we have confirmed that there is no permit application currently filed for that. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you very you. much for listening. Thank you. Panel members, do you have any questions for the speaker? No? Thank you again. Um, Nusheen, are you there? Yes. Can you please speak to the issues raised by the, by the speakers? You have five minutes again. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for the neighbors for uh, sharing their concerns. Uh, actually, uh, about the concerns of the north neighbor, as I mentioned, we had uh, lengthy uh, discussions with this neighbor. I think uh, the lady was uh, probably uh, uh, the wife uh, of this gentleman that uh, talked today. Uh, if you go to the third page of the presentation material that I have provided, uh, you can see that the garage portion was uh, was uh, encroaching into the uh, side setback on that side. And this is a portion that we have removed and the side setback variance was for that one. Although the planning had no concern with that, uh, because it was a one-story projection and only for the garage portion, uh, but we have removed that. And the chimney that the neighbor is referring to is a permitted encroachment and not a variance. Uh, also, we have removed the uh, red portion that is uh, indicated on the uh, rear of the uh, house. And as a result, as you see, the uh, building that we are proposing is shorter in length from the north neighbor. And uh, one other point that I should uh, mention is that uh, the uh, setback of the neighbor uh, is between six inches to 10 inches on their side, on the south side. And uh, they are basically uh, using uh, my client's property to access their uh, utilities and the basement side door. For the first application, in many discussions that I had uh, with the uh, neighbor, uh, she said uh, we offered them that we don't put up any uh, fence on this side to uh, generously uh, allow them to use uh, the, our property to uh, still have access to their uh, side door and uh, in, uh, if they support our application. And uh, she basically said that uh, it, it doesn't matter and the fence is not uh, an issue here and uh, they uh, want to uh, oppose us at the committee anyway. Uh, in this page of um, our presentation, I have shown the changes that we have made. So uh, the suggestions of the committee on July 6 was to uh, clearly uh, indicate what changes and improvements we have made. And we have tried our best to uh, show how we have improved the case. As you see, the red portion at the rear is removed and uh, for that uh, part, the length and depth variances are removed. The 
projection of the garage to the north side setback is removed. So the side setback variance is also uh, eliminated. And the driveway has been uh, made narrower to uh, eliminate the landscaping and soft landscaping variances. And as a result of removing these portions of the building, the FSI is improved to this number. And uh, for the south neighbor uh, that uh, mentioned about the waiver, uh, we are architects and we do this on a daily basis. We already have passed the zoning uh, examination. And for the, uh, for, uh, we did zoning uh, examination for the first application. And for the second, because the changes were very obvious and we know what we are doing, uh, we used our right to uh, have a zoning waiver to uh, just uh, accelerate, the, accelerate the process. Uh, so we uh, came back with a zoning waiver. And for the uh, balcony, uh, we have removed the variance for the number of balconies. We have two platforms on the rear side, uh, and both of them are inset, so there is no uh, no uh, exposure on the side walls. Uh, also, the third floor balcony uh, is being uh, changed to not accessible, so it's basically just a platform, not uh, accessible one. Uh, to remove the variance. So uh, I think the privacy and overlooking concerns are already satisfied and the deck is not a variance. Okay. Um, but uh, still we are okay if a uh, committee decides to put a condition to have a privacy a screen on the south side of the deck. Um, okay, can you wrap up please? You're almost at six minutes. Uh, I think I have covered all the items that uh, both neighbors uh, uh, mentioned. Uh, I just want to mention that uh, the planning uh, has been in support of our application, even the first one. None of the length, depth, site setback, uh, FSI variances were even a concern for the planning, and uh, they were uh, supporting us uh, okay. all along the way. This um, is a very, uh, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to just stop you now because the okay. members might have some questions. Sure. Okay. Panel members, do you have any questions for the agent, Mr. Bayat? Uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> just a quick question. It, from uh, the site plan, it looks as if your neighbor to the north uh, is much closer um, to the locked line than your proposal, and the same thing with the neighbor on the south. Is that uh, accurate? Yes, uh, the existing situation of the uh, properties and uh, existing houses is uh, exactly like this. Uh, this uh, site plan is uh, prepared based on uh, the survey that a uh, uh, registered surveyor has uh, provided. So the existing condition is exactly the same. Uh, and it, uh, the existing uh, house uh, is also uh, indicated with the red dash line on the first, on the second page of my presentation material. Uh, as you see, the existing house of uh, my client is very tiny, uh, and uh, he wants to rebuild the uh, project and. Uh, as I mentioned several times, we are basically inside the allowed building envelope, and uh, we are not uh, asking for any aggressive variance. Uh, I understand that uh, the neighbors uh, are upset that we are reducing the setbacks, but the existing ones are uh, uh, much bigger because uh, it's just the existing condition, but what we are proposing is as of right. We are basically improving the setback on the south side. If you see the dash line, the red dash line, that's the existing house. And on the north side, uh, the proposal is as of right. 
Okay, any other questions, panel members? Mr. Mr. Clay. Just quickly, um, I'm, I may have missed it, Chair. Um, uh, I want to make sure that the applicant has seen the forestry memo and is here, you know, the advisory memo in particular with respect to constructing the front stairs. Uh, yes, uh, we had the same back and forth with uh, the forestry and uh, cons uh, consequently with the planning uh, for the first application. As I mentioned, we had 11 variances uh, then. And no, 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 no. Hold no, on, hold on. Hold on. You... I, I, just, I don't need all that. What I really need is just whether you've seen forestry's to, to have landscaping area. steps. Yeah, uh, that's our plan. Uh, the front uh, steps. Won't, uh, we won't have any excavation for that. The three front steps will be landscaping, and uh, we are okay if you want to put a condition to say that uh, the first three steps are just landscaping with no excavation, with no foundation wall, and uh, we are absolutely okay uh, to do so. I, I think Mr. Clay is asking if have you seen the advisory memo from Forestry dated August 9th, which talks about your options with respect to the uh, construction and the impact on the tree, which is to either reduce the width of the stairs and the landing or to construct the stairs and landings on piers. Have you seen that memo? Yes, exactly. And okay. uh, I was so, uh, referring to the same memo that uh, right. instead of okay. uh, so, using so stairs, you're, we, we I can don't, use landscaping. Okay. That's fine. All we all we want to know is if you're aware of the memo and that you're going to be working with forestry to do this. Yes, sure. Okay, and then there's also forestry conditions one and two. You're aware yes. of those. Okay, that yeah. that's Mr. Clay's question. Okay, um, any other questions, panel members? Uh, Mr. Baya and then Ms. Chan. <laughs> Sorry to belabor. Um, I, I just wanted to compliment the uh, the agent or the architects for making. Uh, the variety of changes that they have. Um, I have a question with regard to just looking at the site plan, both at the front and the rear, you have uh, what looks like pathways and the label interlocking. I assume those are going to be the ideas to have interlocking brick of some kind. Would you be, uh, or, your, or the owner of the property be um, okay with the condition that those interlocking pieces be permeable materials? Uh, in the front yard, you mean? And there's both at the front and at the rear. Um, I it's see uh, so the those label those interlocking. That are, that are uh, labeled as landscaping, those are soft landscaping. Uh, but uh, no, it, it's, you know, if you look at the front on the site plan, you've got some. Uh, 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 images of what would be trees, but just on the above the one tree, it says interlocking. Yes, uh, it can be uh, permeable, sure. And the same thing at the rear. Yes, sure. That's not a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Chen, you have a question? No, I, I have the same question. It's been answered. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, panel members? All right, let's take it into committee then. Mr. Clay, and then Mr. Baya. Oh, sure, I'll, I'll, again, I'll, I'll start. As a here, you might want to add. Um, this has been before the committee a couple times, and uh, the last time I was on it, and there was a, a maelstrom of opposition from uh, people up and down the street, and it was, uh, I think a larger, much larger uh, dwelling. Um, I think the um, the applicant has taken uh, committee's comments to heart and has reduced, made a number of changes from the original proposal. It's smaller, it's shorter. Um, I think they uh, have dropped a number of variances. Um, I, I'm frankly not sure um, if anything that goes in there would uh, fully uh, satisfy the uh, neighbors, but uh, in my view, this is a substantially improved application from uh, the two times that it has been before the committee in the past. So uh, I think now, uh, with some uh, conditions as we've talked about, I think this is a supportable application. Mr. Bayat? 
Um, similarly, I, I'm uh, quite supportive of this particular application. I think, as uh, Mr. Clay has mentioned, uh, a number of changes have been made, and I commend the, the applicant for that. Um, the, uh, also, the renderings that were provided make it a lot easier to understand what the changes have been. Um, so I'd be quite happy, or Mr. Clay would like, uh, if you'd like to go first in, in uh, supporting this application. Oh, you go straight ahead to here. Uh, Lisa Chan, <laughs> did you want to ask something? I have a, I have a question uh, about the condition, uh, about the permeable pavers. Does that include the driveway, the front? Uh, front? Um, I hadn't thought of that, uh, uh, Ian, but I think that might be a good, uh, uh, again, a question for the for the applicant to see if that could, would be um, uh, okay with the... the I think we just do it. I think, yeah, I <laughs> would agree with Because it's a, a, it's a opportunity, I think. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm, so I'm good with that. would you be looking at um, having all hard surfaces in the front and back be permeable pavers? Is that what you're looking for? Yes? That might, that might uh, cover everything front and back. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Clay, I think it was deferred to you for a motion. <laughs> Oh, heavens, I was I was taking the baptism <laughs> here, but I'm happy to do that, Chair. All right. Uh, uh, I'll, uh, I'll move approval of this application subject to forestry condition number one and two. I don't think, we don't necessarily refer to the advisory member, do we, Chair? I think we could put it in the notes if you want to make note of it, just not as a condition, but yeah. okay. just that, I don't know, that the advisory memo be adhered to. Do we need to or not? I mean... I, is this for like uh, for the record or for the just for the record that they are to engage in discussions with uh, as per the uh, advisory memo because they're quite specific about how they want those steps constructed. Um, okay, so we'll and do the that. Uh, yeah. the condition um, there was was there um, screening? There's a planning, planning condition with yeah. planning condition with respect to screening. Yep, uh, uh, and. Side, I think. Uh, the okay. north edge. So this is the north edge? Oh, yeah, through you, Madam Chair, commu our community planning had asked for a condition, but then in further review, they I think they were okay with not having it, but if, um, it's up to committee about the third story balcony if they want, if, if you would want sort of screening on the north and maybe the south side. I think committee wants wanted to do that so okay. let's do yeah. that okay I, I would chair just because third third story balconies uh, i think they do warrant screening and finally uh to uh have uh all hardscaping um uh done in uh, permeable materials okay so that's did you get all the conditions sylvia you wanted to run through them I, so Okay, okay, so it's forestry condition one and two. Mm -hmm. um, then a for the record for the forestry advisory memo. Then there's screening on the third floor, balco Bal rear balcony, north and south side. And a condition for permeable pavers on the hard surfaces in both the front and back. Okay, and that's moved by Mr. Clay, seconded by Mr. Baya. All in favor? That carries unanimously. Okay, thank you everybody, and the committee stands adjourned at 5.54. Thank you, Nancy. Great job. Thanks, team. Thank you all. Great work. Before we, Thanks, guys. Before we, before we disappear, can I ask a question, please, to the staff? Uh, I noticed that the agenda this time, or sometimes, that uh, some of the packages do not have the, um, the tab of the, the items. Especially 